my joke. God damn it. Someone figured out that this game is just HTML5, and there's a demo of it on the site, so you can play it for free. And more importantly, you can actually deconstruct this. You can get the elements of the stupid cat game, and you can do whatever the fuck you want with the art and stuff, which is uh, amazing. <laughs> Always stand up. Oh, look, he does the... Oh, my God, the cat, the cat face. I love it. I love... <laughs> It's just so viscerally unappealing. <laughs> Come on, baby. Pay. Big pay. Big pay. I mean, it's just funny to me because it's, um, it's just out there. So you can just like, like these are just assets in the browser that you can, and it has like different sound effects and shit. It's, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. There's already been some art, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that in, in a bit. Chat. It is. August 29th, which means that this will be the last stream of August. Uh, actually, it's not anymore. It's August 30th. But um, this will be the last stream of August. And that means that straight month is over. August is this beautiful time period where there's no gay shit. There's no holidays of any kind. There's no MLK. There's no Malcolm X, Black History, Latinx, Pacific Islander, Heritage, conser Conservation, LGBTQIA, Big, Bold, P, none of that shit. Um, it is just a good old-fashioned month. So uh, there's only one of it. It's August, and it's coming to a close. However, uh, September is coming up, and... That means we're getting we're getting close to the actual best month of the entire year, which is of course October. Um, every I feel like international recognition of Halloween is increasing, and uh, finally I can enjoy the best month of the entire entire calendar, um, no matter where I'm at, and everyone everyone's along with me for the ride. Um. So. That being said, there are some kiwi, quickie forums updates, and uh, I guess I'll just get right into it because I don't have anything else um, pressing matters to, to 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 play around with. Uh, first, this happened. This came out like just right before the stream. The EFS has published yet another article about the kiwi farms, um, and the result is. The, so if you don't remember. The EFF used to be one of the best, like, pro-freedom of speech on the internet services or nonprofits in the in the world. And over the years, they have been beaten into submission by cancel culture. Um, their first article that they wrote about the Kiwi Farm stuff around the time that Cloudflare happened was by a very esteemed attorney who had serious Supreme Court case law under her uh, in her career. And then there was also like a, I guess like a philosopher, like, I don't know what she, no, philosopher sounds pretentious, but like someone who studies like the ethics of, of stuff. And she was from Berlin and she looked like she was from Berlin and they co-authored an article about how it's a really, 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 really bad idea to make Cloudflare the police of the internet because Cloudflare controls an enormous amount of the internet. So you, you really don't want someone in that position who used to be a, um, a kind of neutral platform that just allowed law enforcement to do their job to suddenly decide actually you know what we're going to actually uh, take direct control and figure out what should be allowed on the internet not they published this article and they just sort of mentioned yeah we don't like the kiwi farmers but this is really stupid and then they were completely meringued on twitter by the usual suspects the gender activists or whatever the fuck you want to call them the people of gender 
And uh, after that, they anonymized their attributions. And the you can see up there, it says by EFF. It used to say by two different people on the first article. And then they swapped that out to EFF. And subsequent articles on this topic have been written, uh, not by any specific people, but rather anonymously through the EFF bylines. Um, every subsequent article has been front loaded with the e the kiwi farms is the worst website we've ever seen and we think that everyone on it should fucking die the police should bust down their doors and shoot them all dead fuck due process uh like like literally like we hope that everyone involved with this website should be prosecuted is in this article somewhere and I sent them an email in reply. The, the article covers basically what you would expect from someone trying to say, like, there's only a couple tier ones. You don't want them censoring stuff. It will bite you in the ass. It already has bit people in the ass. Um, this should be a matter for the courts. This should be a matter for the police. If you think this website is criminal, the people um, uh, acting criminally should be prosecuted in the criminal court. It should not be something that is left up to the massive corporation of Hurricane Electronic, which is an objectively true stance. If you believe that, you are 100% in the right. Unfortunately, um, in today's dynamic, being in the right is no longer what it used to be. It used to be if you were in the right, you were in the right. Congratulations, you win. Nowadays, you're not so lucky. So even though they are in the right, they feel the constant perpetual need to apologize for being right. They um, have to, uh, and, and it's maddening because it, it doesn't make any sense. The people who would decide that they do not want to support the EFF because they have taken a consistent stance towards a website that they don't like are not then going to be the people who will be placated by this kind of line, like balancing act where they have to first, uh, you know, preface that everything that they're doing, um, they, they're, they're saying with the knowledge that the Kiwi farms is the worst thing that's ever created. It's not persuasive. Um, not neither to the general public, not specifically to them. Like they're not going to say, oh, well, you know, they raised some salient points about Internet censorship. Um, and they did say that the Kiwi farms should be completely destroyed by the federal government. But uh, so therefore it balances out. And I understand their point. Like they're not going to say that. That's not going to happen. That person who is so offended by the, the objectively true position that the tier one ISB should not censor the Internet are not going to have a, re, a you know a rational nuanced stance that oh that's okay then because they they clarify that the kiwi farms is a bad site it doesn't work those people are going to stop supporting the eff no matter what you do conversely there are people who are neutral to the kiwi farms a lot of people and neutral to um or positive towards the kiwi farms who would then look at an article that's so limp-wristed and it like uh so hostile to a website that has done literally nothing criminal to deserve such hostilities and then say, oh, well, this website, this charity is not run correctly. The management is political and they can't take a stance without apologizing for it. So why would I send my money to something um, that isn't going to accomplish anything? Because apparently they have some sort of moralizing position um, that the thing that they believe in is somehow also bad. Because that's how it sounds. It's like we we have this technical position, this technical stance that this is a bad thing, but we don't really truly believe in it enough that we're gonna really stand by it with um, a full defense. So why would anybody who does support internet neutrality look at an article like this and then say, "Yeah, actually, um, that's fine. You know, we're gonna that's enough." It's because it's not enough. You're, the the other issue is that if you are trying to genuinely convince people in the industry like Hurricane Electric, that they need to stop um, censoring the internet. This article is detrimental to that purpose. Nobody from Hurricane Electric is going to read an article where the first five paragraph are dedicated to saying that this website is basically criminal and the police should get involved right now and prosecute everyone for their terrible crimes and say, oh, we made a dreadful mistake by acting as internet police. Because at this point, the way that the EFS have worded this um, this article is that they're implying that the Kiwi Farms is as criminal as uh, piracy and child pornography. So if you're in the networking industry, one the, the two things that you will go out of your way to block preemptively before you get a court order are, are child pornography and private or piracy, because those are criminal matters that are, are routinely a problem for people uh, in networking. 
and they will go and step up and block things and they have been doing it for 20 years and nobody's raised a fuss about that because it is a illegal um, burden on them. So by saying this is a terrible, evil, awful criminal website, you're basically saying the website is in the class of child pornographers and piracy, uh, which is just not true. And you're not going to convince people to ease off the gas when that's your stance. Um, and it's like, you know, people just don't get it. They really, maybe, I don't know if it's just their actual personal stance or if that is just something that they feel like they have to say because of politics. Um, but either way, it's like, it's not fair because never, not once have we been contacted by any of the law enforcement agency about the crimes that the Kiwi Farms is accused of. There have been like very specific instances where someone has done something that alerted the FBI to it. And it's almost always like a, a threat of violence towards an unspecific demographic, like the, the fucking post by Sig Sev. It's, it's not like people actually harass. Never, I don't think, ever have I been contacted by police over a specific incident regarding a, an individual on the site who has a thread. It's almost always some dumb shit said by people in articles and happenings about politicians and shit. Um, the same kind of boomer post you would see on Fox News' comment section. And it's... Uh, and it's really it's really frustrating because the whole the whole idea with not allowing the internet service providers to act as law enforcement and preemptively block stuff they don't really have a reason to is that we have due process and we have due process and therefore nobody is guilty of anything until they're proven of being guilty in a court of law and effectively by taking the side of the outrage mob and saying actually the site is super terrible and we really hope that the police will get involved they're already depriving me of due process they're already taking the side that the site is guilty and even though it's super guilty you know we just have to wait for the court system to catch up to it because it's going to come one day but until that day hurricane electric shouldn't be involved which is a extremely weak position it's the weakest position you could possibly take on this matter um so i'm i'm really 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 disappointed that they keep doing this because they're not winning any friends it, again they're not going to win any friends in the demographic of people who are easily outraged about dumb shit and they're not going to win any friends with people who should really care um about censorship because the position that they take is so weak and so ineffective and so unpersuasive that nobody is possibly going to change their mind or see if as, as a viable um, non-profit that actually defends freedom of speech when this is what they do, how they, how they actually action that, that mission statement. So yeah, in short, uh, pretty fucking weak, pretty disappointing. Um, okay. Here's, here's the wash this down. We're going to watch people get arrested. Those eco people who have been like gluing themselves to the tarmac of air airports in, in uh, Europe decided, hey, what we should do is we should go to the United States and we should try that shit there. So they traveled to small town USA and they decided to set up a roadblock to stop uh, uh, travelers to Burning Man from going to Burning Man. The result is uh, indicative of their negligence towards the United States history. Because I think where they end up is in Oklahoma. If you don't know, the majority of Oklahoma is... Let me double check. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is Oklahoma. Nevada, sorry. So they end up in Nevada. And they end up not just in Nevada. They end up in a tribal nation in Nevada, which has um, tribal police, which are regulated by the tribal council as opposed to any state or the federal government. So uh, what they get as a result of stopping there and deciding to ignore the police is not the nice white people police in the white people towns that they've been dealing with in Europe. Uh, they get to deal with chief sitting bull and his uh, pickup trucks. Oh, 
Oh, you're environmental protesters, huh? We're, well, we're the tribal police and we don't give a fuck. We listen to you white devils and your peaceful colonizing many, many centuries ago. No, no, you work out for us. We're now in the middle of the fucking desert. We used to be uh, on the East Coast. Now we're relocated to the middle of fucking nowhere on the worst land of the United States. So, uh, yeah, we're going to run you over with the truck. Maybe. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot the VTuber. Yeah, my VTuber hamster. There we go. Good for them. I hope they learned a valuable lesson about diversity and inclusion and tribal and tribal rights. That's what it really boils down to. That the United States has a lot of making up to do with the natives and the indigenous folks of the United States. And that means handing over the reins to their own into law and forests in their their because you don't want white people policing the, the tribal territory after you know what happened. So it's really up to them to take care of their own lands now. And we can see that in action. White devils being stomped on, being arrested, being ran over, being held at gunpoint. Uh, and everyone, se everyone seems to think that's pretty fucking based. So there you go. Okay, so the gist of this was that they had a, uh, in the Netherlands, they decided to up their policing game. How could we, someone walked in there and said, hey, hey, buddy, we can, we have machine learning at the ready. Uh, we're prepared to give you access to our top tier machine learning. And what we're going to do, right, because it's very smart, right? How do you train a machine? You give it statistics. So they took the statistics of the Dutch police records and they fed it through a machine. And the objective was to come up with an algorithm that would uh, I suppose that like a, a traffic stop or some other incident where the police are required to respond, the machine will tell the police how prepared they need to be for a uh, un unpredictable response. So it used to be like, you know, they get stopped and like whatever. And it's like um, you have to be prepared. But with the new tool, it would say, oh, this person is a high risk for a violent incident at the traffic stop. So the results are predictable. Um, the machine was fucking racist, and it was also very classist. It said, you got to watch out for darkies, and you got to watch out for poor people. So anytime they pulled up on their scanner and put in somebody's details and said, I don't know, this is a poor Muslim. You got to fuck. Bring the SWAT team. Bring the SWAT team. They're co coming with force. No, don't knock on that door, because they'll probably throw some grenade at you or some shit. Uh, march in there. So... Uh, the police computer, uh, which was incredibly racist against uh, blacks and poor people, has been uh, decommissioned <laughs> uh, for racism. <laughs> it was too effective at its job, and it was unfortunately it had to be put on hiatus uh, um, imminently because of uh, the actual preconditions that it would start to recognize for a violent uh, response. Uh, this is also funny. The, so there's Starfield, which is like the new Bethesda game. I haven't heard much about it. I don't get to play it. Okay, I'll, I'll be truthful. Right now, I'm in RuneScape, and I'm uh, doing no, uh, Nightmare Zone, and I'm just practicing my tech because I can't beat the boss of Sins of a Father. This is entirely Boss Man Jack's thing. I've been watching him play old school RuneScape, and now I'm thinking, yeah, I got I to gotta play some old school RuneScape myself. Um, I, last play, I stopped playing because... Um, what was it? Oh, because they, they uh, did something really gay. Oh, they made it so that you could marry, you could gay marry um, for the, the royal marriage quest. You could royal gay marry in, um, in RuneScape. So I, I, wasn't, I was already not playing by that point, so I canceled my subscription. And now after watching Bossman Jack play fucking RuneScape, I'm also playing RuneScape. Farming Renar. And I'm doing uh, birdhouses, which are the best fucking things they've ever added to this game. I love birdhouses so much. Uh, I was about, okay, so Starfield. I don't get to play many video games, so I haven't been following the Starfield news, right? And um, this guy, Dar Darren Tyrone Harris, has... Uh, had access to a warehouse. Apparently, they're getting the game ready for release. Bethesda put all their video games in this fucking warehouse. And then Daryl Darren decided, yeah, I'm going to, like... I'm going to uh, just steal this and sell it. Now, Darren, of course, being a mastermind criminal, 
um, decided that the best way to actuate this crime would be to just list the games that he's selling uh, for sale under Instagram under his real name. So he just said, hey, yo, hold up. Actually, uh, was it Instagram? Uh, it's whatever the fuck this is. It might be Etsy or something. But he listed it and said, if you want uh, early access to Starfield, just let me know. I've stolen it from a warehouse. This is who I am. Uh, just come pick it up. I got you. So uh, the police looked into it, and he had actually stolen the game. So they just arrested him. And now he's sitting in jail. I don't know. I might have posted bail. They usually get posted bail. Uh, Yeah. <clears throat> so white, he tried to make White Boy pay up for his uh, Starfield games and... Unfortunately, they kept the brother down. The Jive Turkey Store. That's funny. <laughs> jive Turkey. That sounds kind of racist. If I called him a Jive Turkey, that I, I would feel like I'm saying a racist thing. And that's what he. That's what he called himself. It's a she, man. Hating on my brother. Trying to grind. Trying to feed his kids and shit. Uh, the other news is that Andy New uh, sued Portland and Tifa members for, I think, for assault. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure it was assault, but it slipped my mind. Yeah, brutally assaulted by Rose City and Tifa during a 2009 protest, and he was awarded $300,000 in damages, money that he will never see because he's effectively sued four baristas uh, in Portland for damages that they definitely do not fucking have. Um, I don't know. It's a nice win, I guess. It's good for the the clout. It's good for like the, the the cred. Like, yeah, man, I I sued Antifa and I won. I got three hundred thousand dollars in the bank because of him. Good for him. Uh, so Saint Peter's Petersburg, which what was Saint Petersburg name? Was that Stalingrad? Stalingrad sounds cooler than Saint Petersburg. St. Petersburg old name. Petrograd. Huh, I don't recognize that. Anyways, in St. Petersburg, formerly known as Petrograd, um, they, uh, there was a furry convention. And now, of course, Bazed Russia, spelled with a Z, uh, was allowing the furry convention, but the actual Bazed Russians decided no. No furry conventions allowed in my Petrograd. So he took a like a grenade. It wasn't actually a grenade. It was some kind of explosive. Um, a diversant simulation grenade. Uh, let me pull that because I don't know what the fuck that is. Serif flash grenade simulator. It's not a real grenade. He he pulled the pin of a of a training grenade of the diversant simulation grenade despite the attempt of the event participants to subdue him the man took the grenade away from the guy which eventually exploded in his hand doctors diagnosed the vision with the closed explosive subcapital fracture of the fifth mercarpia bone well it was explosive but it wasn't like a training one so he took a training grenade and he threw it into a furry convention was instantly yiffed in a giant yiff orgy pile and then the guy who held the grenade blew up his hand because even though it was not loaded with the um, the actual fragmentation that's used to kill people, it's still an explosive. So he blew up his hand. That is strange. What a bizarre thing to do. A black mask, a plastic cylinder, and two more diversant stickball grenades were seized from the spot. A criminal case was opening in Sim for the Russian Federation. A Recall that yesterday in Undelny Park in St. Petersburg, a guy with a grenade attacked a fan of furries. Um, a community of people who are fond of humanoid creatures and animals. That's a very generous definition of a furry. Among whom were teenagers. The attack turned out to be a 19-year-old guy who had already been detained. Now he's in temporary detention center. That's bizarre. You mean to tell me that in, modern, that in Russia right now, with an ongoing war, and with the general Russian lack of control over their supplies and military uh, personnel that you couldn't get a real grenade? What's even the point? Like, they already knew that he was trying to pull the pin on a grenade and they subdued him. So even if it was a real grenade, 
Unless he was like hoping that it would kill him. Oh, you know what it is? He didn't know. He didn't know that that was a that, that was a training grenade. He got his hand on a grenade, and he thought, "I'm going to throw this into a bunch of sexual deviants." And because he wasn't trained, and I guess didn't read the label on it, he just didn't know that it was a, a train grenade. He didn't know that it was not a real fragment grenade. So he got completely uh, scammed, I guess, out of his attack. Huh. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so that's what happened. That's what happened in, in Petrograd today. Let me hide my screen. There is some true news, as there always is. This is a self-defense guide. If I pull this up on screen. Um, for Troons. This is from the Silver Sprocket. A little tranny demon goat up here with all cops or bastards tattooed on his butt. Title is A Self-Defense Study Guide for Trans Women and Gender Non-Conforming Non-Binary Assigned Male at Birth Folks. So this is only... Um, so this guy has written a self-defense guide for trannies. And now, of course, gender is a social construct and doesn't exist. And anyone who says otherwise is a bigot who doesn't know the science, right? But this guide for tranny self-defense only applies to people who are assigned male at birth. Hmm. I wonder why this guide is particularly applicable to assigned male at birth. Could it be that men have a bigger build and you need a bigger build to action some of these defense strategies? Let's find out. I've not actually read through this. This was one of those things that people suggested to me. I said, Josh, read this on the stream. Go into it blind. Self-defense study guide for trans women because the stuff that works for other people doesn't work for us. And gender non-conforming is non binary on the Written by Trans Fighters Oakland based on generous community members' advice. Let's read the preface. Preface. This study guide was created out of stories of lived experiences from a handful of trans women's uh, parentheses, white, black, indigenous, and Asian who use strategies like these to survive in the 90s and 2000s. None of this stuff work every time and can, it's just a small sample of things that can work. Different people are more comfortable and therefore more successful with different approaches. As times change, these strategies also need to change. So pick what seems useful and then invent new strategies as you go. So we have nothing for you, basically. Just just make it up. Your, your, um, your fight for your life transgenocide shit is already fake, so your survival strategies don't really matter either. Just do whatever the fuck you want. It truly does not possibly fucking matter. Awesome. Cool. Racial dynamics will play a big part in which strategies you can use and when train what feels useful to you. So if you're Asian, you got to go for the Kung Fu karate chop, karate chop a cis head in the fucking throat. Um, if you're black, try a high point. Um, uh, keep that shit locked on or attack nine. If you have some some bands to pop, nom I'm saying. And if you're white. Uh, just complain really loudly and the police will be there for you. We'll, we'll follow these instructions, uh, these race. You have to, you have to play into your racial perks. Basically, you can't, you can't fight your class, your racial class and go against that. You have to, you have to work with what works with you. Tech nine. Yeah. Um, create an environment where people choose to join in activities rather than having to sit out, check in with your training partners, every drill scenario, actually allow yourself to step back if you need a break. Role-playing emergency scenarios can cause emotional fallout later, so even if you feel fine now, include time for an emotional calm down or check-in at the end. Talk it out with your friends if you experience event looping or heavy emotions over the next few days. So if, <laughs> so if you and your buddies are playing uh, like a, a rape together and you are super triggered by your play rape, make sure to take a breather, you know. It's not healthy to keep living a fictitious rape that you're doing to practice your Kung Fu or whatever the fuck. Chapter one, people you can't talk back to. Transphobe customers, turfy teachers, your mom's new boyfriend, the DMV clerk, and so... <clears throat> The transphobe customer is saying that you're not a woman. The turfy teacher is writing that is, I guess, not writing that you're not a woman and making you read J.K. Rowling. The 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 poor black your mom's new boyfriend, poor black guy, has to pay for your dinner even though you're a gross shroom. And the DMV clerk, in a sign of ultimate contempt for your uh, your new identity, asks you for your government ID. He's the worst. He's a true a true hateful prick. 
<clears throat> Bring outside attention to the thing by raising your voice and calling it out. That's not cool. Please stop. Actually, I'm a woman and my pronouns are they, them. So if you are... <laughs> I love it. Step one. Are you being accosted? Uh, shout angrily at them. It's ma'am. And they will stop. You will not end on our public freakout. This is a great idea. Bystanders will not intervene. This technique is just a bluff to make the attacker choose to stop. Okay. Use aggressive body language will open the door for them to use their powerful to justifiably punish you. So try the victim body language instead. Train it when a partner practice because running scenarios, your shirt is green. I hate green shirts. Please stop insulting my shirt. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So it's important. Okay. It sounds silly chat, but you got to remember that if they were to actually say you're not a woman and, you know, point at you like that, that could be really triggering. So when you're doing these practices, make sure not to use the, the live ammo as it were, when you're at the range, you don't want to have, you don't want to pull out the, you know, the, hollow point and the actual real live ammunition you want to make sure uh, like on a movie set you want to use blanks you don't want to actually have that shit locked and loaded ready to go that's what's being demonstrated here use the blanks fire the green shirt i hate green shirts and i hate trannies that's the live ammo that can cause a serious emotional bullet hole and kill somebody um Real talk, bystanders in crowds almost always side against trans women, even in crowds of trans people. This is especially so if the crowd is white and the trans woman is not. Guys suggest working in relation to bystanders in crowds and use allies to help posture, but these are strictly bluffing techniques. Remember, nobody's going to help you because most people are disgusted by you. That's a very important thing to learn. More, more trannies should learn this point. <clears throat> people you can't punch. Cis women gro grope gropers? What are they saying that they get sex that these gross fucking freaks get sexually assaulted by by women and you can't punch them because they're a woman and you're a man? Is that what's being implied here? Butthead kid, you can't uh, assault children even when they're making fun of you. You can't uh, you can't assault homeless people, and you can't assault any other tranny. <laughs> That's funny. If a cis man gropes you in a crowd and you slap him for it, what happens? Crowd will subconsciously side against a trans woman, even if they feel that they are trans allies. This this persecution complex is fucking next level. I'm actually pretty impressed by how much. Try this with the training partner. Peeling their fingers off might upset them, so gently place arms inside theirs to keep them from gaining grips. Butterfly, briefly turn towards them. Keep turning until their arms can no longer encircle you. Gently get out. So don't take somebody's hand and pull it off of you. Do a 360 and walk away. That is, that is, I want to stress, that is literally what is being expressed here. Do not remove the hand. Do a 360 and walk away. That is the only way to get out of getting groped by a woman if you're a tranny. <clears throat> um... For people you can talk to back to without repercussions, do it. So, if, oh, if it's a cripple, if a cripple says, hey, get out of my way, you fucking tranny, you can, you can like roid out and say, what the fuck you just say to me, cripple son of a bitch, I'll fucking shove that wheelchair up your ass, you'll be crawling home, bitch, motherfucker. You gotta, you gotta really show that testosterone, okay? Great. If you abuse the crippled, abuse people weaker than you. Embarrass them in front of your friends. Are you even from the Bay? No, I'm not from San Francisco Bay. I'm not a faggot. Thanks. Bye. That's, <laughs> I don't think that's an embarrassing statement to make. Tell them you're disappointed in their behavior. I'm going to tell you what Tia, what you just said. Okay. Cry, scream, you're, say you're contagious. Who cares? Roar. Have a full blown mental fucking breakdown in public if you can get away with it. <laughs> This is great. This is, I actually want every tranny in the entire world to read this and follow these instructions to the T. Uh, many harassers are opportunists. Okay. Um, you're all alone. 
talk to somebody. Judges, juries, HR departments, and peer groups are very likely to roll against a trans woman base. Good self-defense strategies can still be built while avoiding using techniques that will lead to adverse official judgments. Um, you can use a weapon if you're being butt raped. What about violence? Don't be so gay, dude. That's violence there. Men who get in your face, especially friends who are bullying you. Running away from your fight is the best way to survive it. That is true. Posturing. Make sure you sh you bring out your shoulders. Maintain eye contact. Actually, this is like just how to fight. How to be a man and fight. This is why it's assigned male at birth. Because it's like a woman that tries to act tough. You're just going to get pushed over. You weigh like one third of the guy arguing with you. Raise the stakes of, as a de-escalation strategy. If they're intoxicated... Okay, raising the stakes is not de-escalation. That is escalation. Raising the stakes is literally escalation. They call you a slur. Don't return the insult. Try something like fight me. So, so say you're, a, you're not a woman. Turn around and say you want to fucking fight about it, bitch. Yeah, that's what you got to do. That's how you don't... That's how you de-escalate. You turn around when someone says you're not a you're not a woman and you say fight me motherfucker. Per, that's that's they teach that to cops I think in the United States. They teach that to cops as they have a how to deescalate. They're shoving you light violence. Don't shove back. At, immediately escalate. How can you say that this is deescalation? It's it's literally the exact opposite. If someone pushes pushes you and then you punch them, um that is <laughs> that's not deescalation. They're already punching you. Try eye raking, grabbing fingers. What else seems like it would hurt? So fight dirty. God, I love it. They just like become extremely, exceedingly mentally ill. Make it okay for some. If you okay, look. If someone fights you and you, this is this is how to get shot. I want to let you know. And this is how you get shot in the United States. If someone punches you and then you go for their eyes, that at that point, when someone is trying to shove thumbs in your eyes, you are completely legally justified, as far as I'm aware, in most states, to pull out your your concealed carry and shoot them in the fucking chest. At that point, if they're they're like on top of you trying to break your fingers, you may now kill them. And you can say that they, that would be legal because they escalated it. Crazy, man. This is really good. This is excellent. Don't winning about winning fairly. The strategy works by making the statement that everyone will remember next time. That bitch actually bit me. Ew, gross. Now you have AIDS. Now you a gay nigga with AIDS because you got bit by a tranny. In fact, chances are, as far, from what I understand, you might actually become a tranny yourself. Because I'm pretty sure they, they are, are vampires. And they have to bite their victims. Something like that. Real talk. Real talk, dude. I just wanted to be a tranny. Have a good time. Have a good night out. <laughs> okay, real talk. Trans women are often dependent on their aggressors for housing, protection, and financial stability or have a transactional relationship with them. Yes, they're called your parents, and just because they don't call you a woman does not mean that they're abusing you. Trans women may need to continue these relationships after the altercation is over. So after you try to gouge somebody's eyes out, um, you may need to ask them for rent money next month. Tasers, mace, and guns, and other can be other options for other sorts of situations. Uh, but they won't be covered in this guy. A bunch of troons hanging out, trooning. Safety in numbers. Okay, so be, be cool with freaks. Hang out with freaks. Intimate partner de-escalation. So you have to de-escalate. Don't have like a, a lesbian abuse session. Look at that black troon attacking his troon partner. This is just a guide on how to commit domestic abuse at this point. What happens if you defend yourself from your partner using strong language, punches, or weapons? Use a limb to frame your bodies apart. How not to get marital raped? Why does... Okay, this guy has a cat ears. If you, what, what, okay, what do you do if you are a tranny and you're also a cat and your uh, gender queer partner is trying to rip your cat ears off? Are you authorized then? Do you, what kind of kung fu do you do when, you're being, when your cat ears are being assaulted? 
If there's a chance they'll go into a violent panic when you start verbally addressing your discomfort, definitely first secure one of these subtly dominant positions. Flip them over and get on top. Okay. I want to talk, I want to talk about our relationship. I want to, I feel like you're being, I feel like you're being toxic to me. <laughs> what kind of future do you see for us? Boom, boom. Uh, to everyone who is holding on by your fingernails, I want you to know that you're not alone, blah, blah, blah. And then you can take some gay taekwondo, I guess. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks. Um, okay, I, I, many months ago, I made a joke about how the eventuality of Troons is that they will... Um, they will just, uh, like, want an artificial womb that's, like, an abortion blender ready to go. So it's like, you know, they're, um, they, they just get pregnant for the sole express purpose of having an abortion later. I've always, I've, I made that joke a while back. Now, however, I can verify, certify truthfully, there is an abortion kink. This is Trans2 on Reddit. Using an anime, of course, because Tranime is Tranime. May Day 98, she heard Demon Queen says, uh, and then post this meme. Me, doesn't want children. Also me, which is I could get pregnant. And then, of course, the Tranime face is there for added Tranime comfort to the truants reading this. AL76 says, content earning abortion. I literally have an abortion kink, but I can't get pregnant. I had a dysphoric mental breakdown moment when my friend who's an NB with their uterus got an abortion and said they found it empowering and liked it. Crying face. Also, this is the worst comment for Republicans, I guess. This comment is so disgusting that even in the tranny subreddit, it has a, uh, managed to achieve negative nine karma. Even the troons look at this shit. At least some of them. At least... Of the people who saw and reacted to this Reddit post, um, 11 of them, more than the others, uh, disliked it. And what's really, really fun is I, I tracked this down because I wanted to see what comments were on it that were not in the screenshot. And I found this. Um, I'm, I want to read you the comments. So content uh, reply from Mas Wor Mask Work Damn It. Wow, that's an awesome Reddit username. What a great Reddit username. Really impressive says, this is just the worst comment for any human being, responding to him, so this is the worst comment for Republicans, I guess. And then Einar Vaughn replies saying, TBH, I can't really blame them. They won't ever harm any child, period, parentheses, hopefully. Next paragraph, I mean, I don't have any kinks, but I'm like 14. But as long as they don't think it's good to have an abortion kink, what do you want them to do? Like... A kink is a kink as far as I know. You can't do anything about it. If you can, please tell me. I want to know. So on the subreddit where the trannies are talking about their abortion kink, there is a 14-year-old lost German child uh, looking for answers to their life because I guess their parents are not providing any. And uh, she or he is trying to figure out what the fuck a kink is because they're a 14-year-old and they haven't quite been pornography poisoned enough to develop abortion kinks um so i want you to, i want you to all to remember that this is perfectly fine this is acceptable kiwi farms is evil yeah that's uh that's the that's the takeaway of the story meanwhile perfectly acceptable uh stunning and brave dylan mulvaney accepts a streaming awards at the uh at the streaming awards as think as breakout content creator because if you need to be reminded it's been just over a year that dylan mavidi went from absolute nobody trying to to get out of their stagnating broadway career uh to someone visiting the president because of their their takes on his takes on gender issues so uh how long is this two minutes you know what i think that that is the perfect perfect time for for a video to play and the winner is Dylan Mulvaney! Oh my god! Hi! You know
know, I'm really shocked because I thought the only award I would ever maybe win was maybe a Tony Award, but now I'm a musical theater gal with a streamy. <laughs> theater TikTok, we made it to the mainstream. Uh, 532 days ago, I made a coming out video that turned into my Days of Girlhood series. And uh, my life has been changed for the better. Um, but on the flip side, there's also been an extreme amount of transphobia and hate. And I know that my community is feeling it. And I now know that even our allies are feeling it. And I look around this room and I just see so many amazing allies that have platforms. And I think allyship right now needs to look differently. And you need to support trans people publicly and, 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 I, and proudly. And I think the trans community and the creator community actually have something in common. And it's that people often underestimate us. But I know that we can stay optimistic about just the future of transness in general, because if we can influence people to buy $22 Air One smoothies, we can also do this. Um, I just, I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go have a beer, and I love ya. I like how he wore like a dress that had like a bust in it, you know, because it's made, it's a dress, it's for women. And because he's like as thin as a board, and he has no breasts because he's a man. He's like a little twinky gay man. Um, he is like continually popping out of... I'm oh, sorry, that's an archive. I was hoping that this in the other thread. Um, there's a picture, like there's parts where he's like leaning forward and you can just see straight up his cup because he's like completely flat because he's a man. And <clears throat> for some reason we're rewarding this person and his deviant behavior with uh, actual <laughs> literally with awards we're giving him actual awards uh, for being a sick fuck isn't that great wonderful um yeah oh this is it that's him up nice and close looks wow what a woman <laughs> i'm so happy to see that dylan mulvaney is suffering twink death at like an alarming rate and now he just he has to um he has to stay thin because you know obviously he has to stay thin for to be a twink but now like his exercise is just causing him to buff up like a dude so he's like an old dude um who really really looks his age and he looks super masculine especially with those guns like, damn look at those guns this for that's for punching tram folks with you you, you say something i don't like i'm gonna gouge fuck it on my vote how about that how about that cast me outside and then there is um this one which this is the uh, this this is his like his cups don't hang to him he pi he picked a dress that doesn't fit him because he's a man and he picked a woman's dress. Did I make that point yet? That he's a man and he's picked a woman's dress that so doesn't fit him. Um. Oh, that's was uh, I should have read this immediately after reading the guy because I was thinking about this. Like, did I leave that in the Reddit section or did I have that for here? Uh, actually, let me pull down the, the hamster now. Um. So th this guy definitely should have followed the de-escalation advice of the uh, the article that we just read. He says. Group of kids clowned on me at the fair. I went to a Tennessee State Fair last night with some friends. I got all dolled up and was a little scared, but once I was there, I was kind of feeling myself, and I couldn't get any stares or anything, so I was like, maybe I pass? Pass or not, we had a good time until my friend and I were waiting for our friends to get off on a ride, and this group of like five ten-year-olds came up to us. One of them was filming me with an iPhone, and the other was using his phone as a microphone. All eyes were on me when he started asking me questions like, tell me why, tell me about yourself, why are you at the fair, what you like to do for fun. I was so overwhelmed and afraid to speak, my voice does not pass at all, but I mustered up the courage to say, I don't know, hang out with my friends and have a good time, I guess, lol. Then this girl chimed in and asked me about my friend, cis girl, we're together, asked me if me and my friend, who was a cis girl, were together, and I was like, no, and she said, well, if all, if y'all were, you'd still be straight because you're just a man who dresses like a girl. I just froze up and my friend was like, you guys need to get out of here right now. And they were like, chill. We didn't do anything. But as they were leaving, one of them said, stop dressing up like a girl, man. And they were all laughing at me. Fucking stupid ass little kids. Goddamn, that wrecked me so hard. All you negative Nancy's out there like, oh, no, the kids, the kids are so down bad where the kids are. The kids are fine. Chat. The kids are fine. 
you know, they instinctively know what a man is and what a woman is until they go to college, and then they're not fine anymore. But in places like Tennessee, it doesn't happen that much, I guess. <laughs> or they just go to a trade school instead of going to get fucked in the ass by training school. Unlike in Canada. Unlike in Canada, um, the Kayla Lemu Lem Lem has returned to class. They were put on leave following the controversy over his enormous fake tits that are obviously a sex toy that he wears around for some reason. Um, this causes a bunch of upset with the parents. He was put on leave, and I guess the school couldn't get rid of him, so he's back, and he's got the enormous tits on again. Uh, the school says that they have increased security and sent a warning to parents that they may be subject to threats and harassment uh, for the small, unfortunate circumstance of having a vile sex pass on their, their school campus. Uh, this is him, by the way, flying with a male porn star also, or skydiving with a male porn star also with um, his tits on. So those tits have been skydiving. Have, have your tits been skydiving? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> all, all thanks to the Canadian taxpayer. We, we thank you for your service, uh, Canadian taxpayers. Well, where would we be without the glorious country of Canada and uh, her tax dollars? Uh, let me hide my screen so I can switch. All right. <clears throat> Actual cow content. We have, we may have too much. I'm deciding if I should cut, uh, I might cut this a little bit early than what I have prepared. So I have some stuff for Friday just in case, because I know um, the Friday streams generally have a little bit less just because of the timing. But here is Uba Wolf 1488. And he's saying, um, <clears throat> ladies, is there some unwritten rule that when an ex of yours gets with someone and posts them on social media, you got to try to get them back. In the past two months, I've heard from four of my exes and a couple I haven't talked to in over two years. So this fat, dumpy, greasely, emotionally abusive, psychologically uh, predisposed to lying, manipulative asshole, broke ass as well, I believe, posted... Some pictures of him with his forehead, his new ginger forehead, and uh, wow, the women in his life are lining up with guilt. I can't believe I let that hunk go. I can't believe I let that man meat get out of my life. I had it so good with Boogie1488. Um, here he is. Damn, I can't. he's the one that got away, chat. He <laughs> he got I can't believe I can't believe only now do they see the gravity of their mistake I want to say I'm pretty sure I want to see there's like a picture of them together recently and they're doing that thing where it's like she has her head tilted forward. this one this is the picture I was thinking of she has her head tilted forward I don't know what the fuck she's doing it really is. It's one of the most anomalous things that I've ever seen a woman do. Like, we at the fair, and then she's like tilting her head down, like she just dropped something. Like she's trying to pick her phone up off the floor. Like, oh fuck, I dropped my phone, and then it accidentally sh snapped a photo of her looking down, bending over to to pick up the phone. And you only know that's not the case because Boogie actually posted this to the internet. So I'm not sure if it's like. She's there's something about her face that she's really embarrassed of. I thought it was because she has an enormous forehead, but the way that her ankles are done, it's like her forehead looks even bigger because it's like the most prominent thing in the picture. It's like the center of the. It's like literally, if you look at the the horizontal and vertical alignment, it's like the most center center thing in the photo. So I really don't know what the fuck she's doing. If your forehead is big, you don't do that. Yeah, I I think she's trying to make. Make her big forehead like because you see it and you think, oh, that's like a perspective thing because she's like leaning forward. But all it does is it makes you makes it look even bigger. So I really don't know what the fuck she's doing. It's a little bit bizarre. Oh, I had this lined up already. Just show it. 
<laughs> the still of him and like his like his gormless expression and that's my favorite word his gormless expression makes it kind of look like he's like a a fallout mutant and it's like a zoom up you know um that's mode like you're about to start picking body parts you have a 99 percent on that gut um you can pick each leg it's a bit that's a bit more productive because you you only it's easy to hobble him it's easy to hobble his big fat legs but if you're looking for a sure shot you got to go for the center mass okay this is this is the um the really big news i hope everyone's sitting down because this this was uh quite marvelous to hear Patrick S. Tomlinson, uh, as I mentioned last stream, I think, had filed with two attorneys to resolve his contempt of court hearing because he had um, he had announced to the world that he did not intend to pay his court-ordered agreement with Quasi. Um, so the court... Uh, Received the request from Quasi's attorney to hold him in contempt. And then you say, okay, this looks plausible. Let's hold a hearing. Hearing is scheduled. Patrick waits until the last second, hires two different attorneys to represent him. Goes to court and they agree um, to a settlement. And this is after weeks and weeks and weeks and months and maybe even years of Patrick Tomlinson saying, no. It's insignificant baby child quasi will not get a single cent i will not pay those terrorists demanding an extortion a ransom a single cent child stalker and uh so after this hearing he agrees to a settlement the details are not made public i don't think and today the news has come in that Patrick Tomlinson has paid Quasi $32,709.80 and $5 to the court as a court fee. Um, and it says there, full satisfaction. So I think that is the full amount. Now, I, I don't know the specific details of his debt um, because in his lawsuit, he sued not only Quasi, he actually um, sued me. I got out of that very quickly. I, I, I retained an attorney for $5,000, um, and I, I took care of that so I didn't have to give any user data over to Patrick Tomlinson. I did not receive anything because I was out of the case very, very early. Um, but Cloudflare and Google were not. They were wrapped up in it. So I think they each have like a fifteen dollars to $20,000 um, award from, from Patrick. Uh, but quasi had the significant 23 something thousand dollars and then that accrued interest up to the amount of 59,000 I want to say so he has received his full payment and then also a third of the interest that had accrued on it um and I think that he still owes Cloudflare and Google money I think people even I think people posted documents that indicate that Patrick took a lien out on his house to secure a loan to immediately pay um either Google or Cloudflare, or maybe both. I'm not sure what the, the, the deal is with that. Um, so after the many years that I've been talking about Patrick now, um, which started with me playing the weird audio from the tr troll pretending to be a Huffington Post reporter, um, and just following his tweets for a while, the, the story has come full circle. He lost his lawsuit. He uh, tried to fight the payment he owed in the appellate court. It was struck down. He agreed to a payment plan that he did not intend to stick to. He was almost held in contempt of court. He had to re-lawyer up because I guess his existing lawyer bailed or he, um, Patrick didn't agree to the payment payment fee that he offered. And then after getting two new lawyers, who I assume said the exact same thing to Patrick that his old lawyer did and told him, pay up, retard. You're about to ruin your fucking life if you don't pay this guy after agreeing to. Um, and fighting it is going to cost you more fighting the court ordered payment schedule that you already agreed to is going to cost more money than just paying it. Just pay it. You fucking idiot. He finally relented and said, okay, fine. I will pay it. And he did, um, from the court docket, it looks like that he paid the amount in full. Um, I don't, I like, I'm not intimately familiar with, um, Milwaukee, uh, court dockets, but the language seems pretty unambiguous, so um, I feel confident in saying that he has paid Quasi already. Um, as far as...
uh, the, the, what remains is that you would think, you would think after all this, the many, 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 many months of this bullshit, and finally being forced to pay the terrorist ransom money by Al Al Qaeda Al Qai Al Qazaida, um, he is now finally going to just take the L and be done with it. However, uh, unfortunately for him, unfortunately for us, he is Patrick S. Tomlinson, and he does not simply take the L child. Uh, he decides to act like a big fat gay baby on social media. This is him on Knitter, or sorry, on Zitter, which I'm now banned from, by the way. I didn't even mention that, but Elon Musk banned me again. I don't know why. It was a permanent ban, and it wasn't because of any specific tweet, apparently. Um, Patrick says, in reply to uh, Korak saying, Buck broke him with the full satisfaction. He says, wrong as always, stalker. Enjoy prison. Then Simon Skitter says, hey, Patrick, if you sell 32,000 books, then you'll have what you just paid to Quasi. Patrick says, wrong as always, stalker, enjoy prison. Uh, Quark follows that up by says, you cannot be serious. You have to be playing along at this point. And it's another copy of the same thing over and over again. Uh, so the result of him being forced to pay tens of thousands of dollars to, to Quasi and fighting this litigation in court for years at this point um, is nothing. He has learned absolutely nothing. And I don't know, I really don't know what's happening in his head right now because he most certainly has paid quasi. So it's a little bit concerning that despite having paid quasi, um, he is now on social media saying, no, I have not paid quasi. So it has to be like a like an actual coping strategy. Like when you suffer PTSD and you disassociate and you start lying um, about what happened that day, it, he literally is doing that where he's completely disassociated from reality. And he's just pretending that he didn't pay quasi. Or the other alternative is that the... because. His legal defense was not paid out of pocket. His legal defense was paid for by the Science Fiction Writers Association of America, uh, the SWFAA, or SFWAA. And that's apparently a guild that's gotten into lots of nasty stuff, and a lot of their authors have been um, not good people, the kind of not good people I don't like to mention on streams because then people complain that I mention those bad people that nobody likes um, every stream. So in short, they've had a lot of controversy um, with their other authors, and they were the ones that paid for... Patrick comments on the Sue, a bunch of anonymous internet users. So it is rumored that perhaps he was able to get the guild of not nice people that we don't talk about to pay for his legal expenses as well, his legal awards. And then when he's saying, no, I did not pay quasi, he's actually being technically correct and saying that, no, I didn't pay it. The guild did. So he's being up, being up twos, and that allows him to try and maintain his um, his uh, facade of of hardcore, never taking an L, you know that kind of shit. That his ego remains unbruised, but the court is satisfied by the payment. Um, nah, he paid. Says a bear. Does a bear have this information? I I. <laughs> Normally, when someone is like this retarded, like Tomlinson, I would I would give them the benefit of a doubt and be like, yeah, he probably did just get the guild to pay or something. And that way he's technically correct. However, I'm at this, like the way that he's behaved in the last couple months in regards to the lawsuit and having to come to the reality that he's lost is so baffling to me. I am willing to accept that. Um, he's just lost his fucking mind at this point and um is able to actually live in a like a fake reality where he won and the money that he's paid quasi isn't actually isn't actually going to him somehow or he's just like blotted it out of his head maybe he okay here okay here's my here's my theory here's what happened uh, write this in stone this is my actual take Patrick Tomlinson had one of those narcissistic meltdowns. Like, uh, there's a, I think it is nar narcissistic meltdown, where like a, a proper narcissist is confronted on their lies, and they have like a like a full blown fucking mental attack, right? So Patrick Tomlinson 
secluded himself in his basement and started shitting his pants and drooling and screaming at the top of his lungs. And in this moment of weakness, right, his wife, who I can't think of the name of, it's like Christy or some shit, uh, goes out to, um, goes out to the courthouse and takes out his checkbook because they have a married checking account, right? And then pays quasi on his behalf. And then his attorney just shows up um, that contempt of court here and says, we've come to an agreement. We've worked something out, right? So we were, the lawyer worked it out um, like Patrick Bateman style and just paid off quasi. And then uh, the wife comes home and is like, sweetie, sweetie pie, you won. They went to the hearing and everything was thrown out and you don't owe quasi anymore. It's all settled. You, you won. And then he's like, yes, stalker child. I already knew that. You may return to the kitchen uh, at your leisure. Enjoy prison. <laughs> and then he get, he wakes up. He washes off all the poo in his pants. And then he immediately returns to Twitter and just says, no, stalker child. <laughs> I do not owe quasi anything. And, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's just what happened. And now he's fine. Everything's okay again. He'll figure out what to do about the money later when he realizes that there's a chunk of it missing. i will just say that he'll lie and say that like a, she'll lie and say that like a, uh, a troll stole it or something. And then he'll go on Twitter and complain about it. <laughs> um, so that's that, uh, that, that arc has ended. However, retribution for the trolls is only just beginning patrick is scorned and he's not going to take um this thing which he doesn't mentally accept as having happened lying down jackie singh the only person who is pro tomlinson uh, a very very ugly fat mentally ill indian woman who thinks that she's a super hacker uh published this tweet immediately after the payment was received um in regards to trolls that had continued to see um, send Patrick annoying or, uh, you know, tr like trolling text messages. She says, hey, we are cinch. I am going to start contacting the six individuals on your board of directors one by one. If you don't take action to end the account associated with these messages and apply your TOS downstream to your white labeled apps to stop attackers getting a new number every five minutes. This, in my unprofessional opinion, is criminal extortion. You can, even if someone is doing something bad to you, you cannot go to a person or a company and tell them, hey, X, I am going to do Y unless you Z. Now, you can f threaten them with a lawsuit and say that they have uh, committed gross you know, negligence by allowing spammers and, uh, and the pests to keep annoying her or him with text messages. You're in your right to do that. You cannot tell a company that you're going to start harassing their directors unless they do something that you want them to do, even if what they, you're wanting them to do is to take action against a crime because she doesn't know what kind of action they take internally. They could be trying their very best to stop, you know, abuse of their services. She doesn't know that. She's just assuming that they're not doing anything because she's a, you know, an imbecile. So if they were to file a criminal complaint against her for extortion, um, they would actually be within the right to do so, I think, because this is pretty, pretty iffy, especially if she does start calling them up and, uh, and harassing them as a form of retribution for, um, for not banning the people that she once banned, which is a bit bizarre. Uh, I, this, this person really like, I don't know what her malfunction is. I don't know why she, she's like this it's a little bit bizarre she is kind of like a weird female version of patrick and she found her way to him autonomously so i guess if his wife ever divorces him for being a big fat loser that lost you know tens of thousands of dollars in some bullshit lawsuit uh she could hook up with jackie or he could hook up with jackie they seem made for each other i don't know why they couldn't Yeah, but that's it. That's it for the, the Patrick stuff. They're, they're pretty made for each other, I think. Power couple. Yeah, that's right. Power couple. That's the right word. Um, oh, this is, uh, this is a message by one of those people I can't talk about. This is Earl Dube, 
the white Bowser. Earl has an uh, ah. I know how to address this without talking about the bad people, right? Earl is an anime avatar, and this anime avatar announces, you know what my what the most ironic twist of fate is? The job is working with mentally disabled kids. I'm going to be a behavioral technician. So this anime avatar, wink, wink, is going to be working with seriously disabled kids as a behavioral technician. So, um, they've already deleted these messages, apparently. I don't know the full story of Earl, but, uh, you could check out his thread, the White Bowser, if you're so inclined. Because apparently he had a big thing where he was out as, as a not good person that we don't talk about. And, um has since found new work, which in this instance is just uh, working with kids, because why not? <laughs> Sounds like a dream job, especially kids that can't talk. Wonderful. What a great thing. <laughs> okay, and then um, Fousey, I talked about, I talked about him getting arrested. Um, the result of him uh, calling the police and saying they had a gun to his head when he didn't was that he got Baker acting. Baker acting is a fun thing, if you don't know what Baker acting is in... Um, in the United States, I think Baker acting is specifically Florida. I want to say that is, is I should know this because I'm from Florida. I think Baker acting, I think he was in Florida, right? Baker acting is specifically Florida. The California equivalent is a 5150. It's a mental, it's a mental health hold. When the police believe that you are a imminent danger to yourself, they reserve the right to put you on a temporary, I think 48 hour or 72 hour hold, involuntary hold. Uh, under, and it's called Baker acting in the medical the medical world. So, Mr. Fousey, after calling the police on himself and saying they had a gun to his head because of cyber terrorists on the internet, uh, the kind police gave him a couple days uh, under the Baker Act to get his shit together. And this is him talking about it. Hey guys, I'm really upset um, because I was hoping you guys would interact with me on Discord. I'm here with Bassam. But you guys are being really weird, so forget about it. Just want to say hi. I miss y'all. I'm currently under what's it called? This 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 thing the cops put me under. I have no idea. I forgot the name of the act. When Baker you can't act. leave a mental hospital until you get clearance. It's not a nice act. <laughs> it's not a nice act. Um, can't leave the hospital until I get clearance from the police. So I've been here for four days now. They drug me up every day. Anytime I say something wrong, wallahi, they put a needle this big into my arm. But I love y'all. I made the point four second shot. I got fouled out. That's all it is. I'll be back. Y'all know that. Season two on the way. We champions now. Let's get it. G7, baby. That's like a very American thing. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that except American. Yeah. He, he, hey, it's your boy. I'm in the in, I'm in the psychiatric facility under an involuntary hold, what they call a Baker acting. And uh, you know, I'm gonna once I'm done with this, I'm gonna be out there making the content, getting y'all what you want to see back on the back on the tubes again. And it's like under no other place on earth would that ever happen. Like you, it's a uniquely American thing where you can just live stream yourself from the the mental hospital because you just had a psychotic episode and you're advertising your psychotic episode to your fans cool yes i know it look like shit. by the way yes i know it look like shit. when i get out of here though eyebrows done beard line up i'm getting a pink diamond tooth right here for free i'm shaving my head it's gonna be so icy but hey this is gonna make y'all hate mercury more I told him if he posts the picture, the video I sent him with the caption to Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok in the next 20 minutes, so you'll have to vouch, he gets $1,000. We giving out money out here now. I gave I gave the hospital people money. I gave, I'm just giving out money to give money out now. I love y'all. Let's get it. Oh, start drinking water. Thirsty. So you can find, if you're interested in this mentally ill man's adventures and on the internet, now you can find him on kick.com. I also stream on kick. I'm not quite as big a kicker as Mr. Fousey. He's he's I think he's the one of the largest uh, kickers. There's other kickers who are bigger than him, but he's up there. Um and then I have some minor boss man jack content. Uh the thread on him has done phenomenally well. It's up to like 64 or something pages now. Um, and everyone loves it. And someone has taken the liberty of hunting down the cat slot 
and finding the original assets of the cat slot. Um, and so that people can make nice memes. Nice memes like this. And I think there's another one down here. Is this it? This is uh, the cat slot kneeling on on our boy Austin, who just lost every it's who just lost everything. He couldn't believe it. It all went so fast, but he lost everything. Um. Anyways, so yeah, you can you can put together whatever the fuck you want uh, for your thing. Actually, there was a there was a really cool fan art that someone did. I wonder if I can find it real quick. Oh, this. He's using it as an avatar. Someone did a, a slobber mutt edit of <laughs> with of the cat. So, so he has the money sign eyes and shit. That's really cute. Uh, so as far as like boss man content, um, he's been not having a good good week. Uh, I will. It's it's more of the same where he's just like playing slots. He's playing blackjack and standing on every twelve and um, just just betting like half of his entire pot. At a time and losing it. Uh, however, I would like to show you one particular clip. Boss man is playing blackjack. He's down to two dollars. He he thinks that he is going to climb out. He like um in the dark night rises. He's going to climb out of this fucking pit with his two dollars if he just plays the card right. Okay. Now to his to his uh, credit, there was one stream where he was down to five. He bet five, he had like a blackjack, and then just kept doubling every time until he got up to 100, and then he lost it all, like in one hand. So he has done that before, but he is down here in the pit right now, and he's thinking, I just got to win with these $2, my dude. Let's see how that works. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Let's let's break this down, okay? So first of all, he's playing. He's got two dollars left. Let's see what the hand is that bankrupts him. Ten, uh, t face side ten. So far, so good. Uh, dealer's got a ten, so it's a push. He gets a fourteen. That's not a good hand. You don't want to have a fourteen. So he's not going to hit because he doesn't. Want, if if he hits, he's pretty much guaranteed to bust. So he thinks if I just um. Oh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is the one where okay, you can actually see his um his cursor go up right here. You see how it goes up to stand? He tries to instinctively cuz he knows he can't hit cuz he'll probably bust and it's safer just to cuz it's his last hand. He thinks I'll just stand no matter what. I don't want to risk busting on those. So he goes up to stand. And then as he's clicking stand, you can see his cursor right there is over the stand button and he's trying to click it. As he's doing this, the other card is revealed and the dealer has gotten a blackjack which psychologically breaks him once he realizes that his he's not able to stand because the house just hit 21 he loses his fucking mind and he throws his chair now let's let, let's rewatch the chair throw chat you ready um now i this has been described to me as a naruto run he seems to hunch over with his hands behind his back so i definitely see the resemblance to naruto and he is and he is running backwards. However, someone else has compared him to a hermit crab because for whatever reason, in his attempt to throw his chair, he has started using his chair as a hermit crab shell. And now his back is covered as if he were skidding along on the, the sea floor. He also then decides to throw the chair and then he goes back to the screen to to march around in his underwear. I must well, here. OK, I would never encourage anyone to. Uh, interact with a locale right however theoretically speaking if his parents were to go and buy him nice comfy pajamas for his birthday or for christmas i would propose the cat slot face if you took the cat slot when like open mouth face and you just plastered that on some pajamas 100 percent uh would be something that looks dashing uh would would suit him i think that he would really like it so i I don't know if his parents watch my streams. I think cat face pajamas work for. Him. By the way, what is the what is it with streamers and wearing pajamas? Because there's there's that stream of low techs before he shot himself, 
where he's streaming and he's wearing pig pajamas and he gets up to like show people his pig pajamas at some point. I played this on stream. I'm pretty sure of it. Am I the only, I feel like I'm the only streamer who streams fully clothes. I have like two layers of shirts on right now and I have my pants and my belt is buckled. I don't have any shoes on. I guess I could get some nice like office loafers and wear those. Like I'm actually going to office to do a job, but I think like Nick Ricada streams naked at this point. Maybe Dick. I think Dick wears clothes because Sean's in his office when he's um in his laundry room when he's when he's doing that. So me, me and Dick are the and Sean are the only people. But I don't know. As far as people who stream by themselves, I think I'm the only person who streams with clothes on. <laughs> Um, anyways, back to the, the run. So he shows up and he struts around his pig and his polar bear. I thought those were pigs too. They're polar bears. He struts around his polar bear pajamas and does a little dance for us. Uh, 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 fuck you, blackjack. And then he realizes that now he's standing at his computer screen and he can't sit down because he just threw his chair. So uh, he does the walk of shame to the other side of his room and picks up his chair so he can sit down. Oh, he throws it down. So even though he he can sneeze, that he needs his chair to continue sitting in front of his computer, uh, he forcefully sets it down to indicate that he is still a very angry boy about the, the loss that he just had. Um, there's something else I was going to say about this. Oh. He, uh, his father hates him, but for some reason bought him like an, I think like a nice pair of like turtle, turtle beach from Walmart. And he's already started banging those against this keyboard. I think he broke his headset by, cause he lost or something. He was like, girl, fuck you headset. And he broke it. That's uh, something that I did when I was like a teenager. I, I broke a pair, a nice pair of headsets that I had paid for with my Whataburger money in a fit of rage over fucking Dota. I smashed my headset and I was thinking, man, that's fucking stupid. And I don't think I've ever broken anything of mine in a fit of rage since then. Cause I realized there is literally no point to bang your own objects that you need to, to listen to music and shit, um, over dumb shit that doesn't, that is not rectified by this. <laughs> so, uh, that yeah, that's something most people I think learn at an earlier stage of their life. That there's no point damaging your own possessions. My great Dane ate my last two headsets. Tell him to stop. Give him some fucking Scooby snacks. <laughs> train your train your mutt to not eat your your your. I, God, I would be fucking pissed. My headset's nice. Now my only issue is I have um. Let me pull my headset. God, I sounds. I never realize how loud I speak until I pull off my headset. And I realize I'm talking at above, an above room, room uh, level. I have a Bayer Dynamic DT700 Pro X, which I'm pretty sure I don't need for what I do. My only issue is that I think I have big ears, and they kind of press on my ears a little bit. They're a little bit too tight. I have a really big head, and I have big ears. Um, so I need something a little bit more flexible. My next time I'll get something a little bit bigger for people with big heads. Room speaker. Um, right, next. So that's the boss man jack update. There's not much going on with him. He's just gambling and losing. People are enjoying the content. When he goes live, everyone tunes in to see him lose, to see him say the same fucking line again where he goes, I just lost it all. I can't believe that, man. I'm like, yeah, I can believe that. Okay. I have to be careful with how I discuss this next topic. I really I really don't know how to handle Juju at this point. And that's how I'm going to refer to him because I don't I, I'm not going to there's a sort of polite thing that I that, that I've retained where I don't say his real name, but I don't want to call him Dick cuz that's like playing into his character. So I'm just going to call him Juju, the cow. Juju and Vito are complicated because Juju has this narcissistic thing where he likes to pretend that he's a big Hollywood f famous guy. So anytime any drama is happening, he does the thing where he fake laughs and goes, ah, 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 ah. And then um, he just acts like it's a big show to him. So the more like offended he is, the more he puts on this shit eating grin and acts like he's Mr. Hollywood. Um, 
So he's been tweeting nonstop since I made fun of him about about both um fuck what's his face Eric July, and then also he's been talking about me and how I need to totally come on his show. I'm I would rather be fucking shot dead than end up on the dick show again. I have already said my piece about as much as I want to say to him. Everything else that he can that I want to say uh, he can pick up by clips and play on this fucking show. I don't care. That's not happening. Um, I never want to be on anything that Vito is involved in. So, uh, the first thing that happened after the stream in regards to Juju and Vito is that, for whatever reason, Vito posted this diatribe about how Eric July is thin-skinned and that he's only suing him because of the criticism against his comic book, which is obvious bullshit, because nobody gives a fuck what this fat pedophile thinks. Here's this fat pedophile, by the way, with a short, stubby, fat pedophile finger. And he's completely naked, and for whatever, and he appears to be living in a tent. I don't know why his house, his bed looks like a fucking tent. Um, and he's decided to post fat shirtless pictures of himself for whatever reason, I guess for attention. Uh, Juju also made a tweet about how... Um, oh, made a tweet to ISOM, the name of the, uh, the ministry that's suing Eric July over the trademark. And by the way, the trademark dispute is not like a full fledged lawsuit. Well, I mean, it is a lawsuit, but what they're saying is we need to go to arbitration and figure out a way that we can, that our trademark can, cause here's the thing. Yes. It is a dick move to sue somebody. It's a huge pain in the balls that nobody wants to deal with. However, uh, again, I have read an entire book on trademark, copyright, patents, and shit. And the way that it works in the United States is that if you have a trademark or you have a copyright and you don't defend it, then um, it becomes less less well protected and less easy to defend in the future. So if you allow a guy to make a comic book called Isom and then somebody else makes a more egregious um, infringement on your trademark by calling theirs like... I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they make a sex toy, something that the, the ministry does not want to be associated with. It's like a porn book or something. Like, uh, there we go, a porn mag. Somebody makes a porn mag, and they call it ISOM, too. And ISOM does not want their book to be, their uh, their ministry to be associated with a pornography magazine. So they take uh, the pornography magazine to court, and the court says, well, there's already a comic book named ISOM, so, and you didn't sue them, so therefore, you know, you have to share your trademark with other industries, and... Uh, in this case, a pornography magazine, which they, they don't want to do. So unfortunately, be, just because of the way that the courts work and the way that trademarks work, if you don't defend your trademark, you can lose it and shit like that can happen. So all they've done is they've, they've filed a lawsuit, but they hope to bring it to arbitration and they hope to come to a, an agreement where um, both parties are satisfied, which I believe um, will result in ISOM becoming a, um, uh, getting a subtitle. It'll be called ISOM the something something you know so the the black the black comic book or something literally anything i sum the dark defender <laughs> i sum the bbc literally anything it'll become a a, a a a conjoined title like that and that way the the trademark will be defended and they won't lose the name i sum it just becomes a subtitled name there you go um however it's still a pain in the ass eric july is upset about it i don't blame him Nobody likes to be sued. And Dick then decides to actively tweet Isom the ministry and says, Eric July has threatened to sue me over your trademark dispute, claiming, quote, I tricked you into its into his hundreds of thousands of fans. If fans have reported all my accounts in retaliation, Patreon, Twitter, shopping sites, etc., trying to destroy my business. I hope you take his evil into account when negotiating his licensing terms. He is a bully and a nasty individual who does not represent what your mark stands for. So Juju decides, after being t called out, after being told, I am going to sue you because you are interfering with my business and you are instigating lawsuits against me, decides in his infinite wisdom to go out to Twitter and directly tell the ISIS ministries in public that um, he that you should sue him uh, because he's a bad guy. So even after all, like after the the horrible quotes on the Eric Live video that I played last stream, he's doubled down on it. And then after there's even a specific thing in civil litigation where after you've been notified by intent to sue, um, there are certain actions that you take that become less, more, um, more serious. Like once the lawsuit has began, 
a lot of things that you could get away with become less excusable because you've already been notified by the intent to sue. Uh, in particular, I know in, in particular that if you destroy evidence after the intent to sue has, you've been notified about the intent to file a lawsuit, um, the, in a jury trial of that evidence, the jury is instructed to interpret it, the destroyed information as being as damning as they could possibly imagine. So they're, they're instructed by the, the judge to assume that whatever is destroyed is as bad as it could possibly be for the defense. Um, so that's an example, just an example of how after you've been notified of a lawsuit, when you do certain things involving the, the case, it can be interpreted very seriously and have long-term negative repercussions for, for your life. So, um, being told, I intend to sue you because you're interfering with my business. And then Dick goes out of his way to interfere with his business as much as possible. Uh, I think makes him look terrible. I don't know the precise legal implications of it. I would assume that there is some though. This, this is great. I don't know where this comes from. Vito posted it. And I guess he had his, his artist draw it with the pen. His comic, by the way, is behind on schedule. So Juju and Vito love to make fun of Eric July's comic and point out that it's behind on schedule or that they're paying too much for certain services. They love to criticize literally every single part and aspect of his operation every single day, every single episode. Um, Vito himself is actually behind on schedule with his shittier, much shittier, much less um, profitable comic book, which has much fewer buyers. So how he's fucked it up when Eric July has millions and is doing about as good a job is anyone's guess. So in this, I guess they just hired the artist for his comic book to make a single frame as a joke. And it's Vito saying, the rip tards have begun reproducing at an incredible rate. Though they still lack basic human intelligence, Intelligence, stack enough morons together and you have a viable threat. Thankfully, Agent Juju the Cow has a plan for dealing with the brain-dead creatures. So, number one, this looks racist. When you, when you start talking about black people reproducing at an incredible rate and they all have, like, automatic guns and are going, like, like, she. That seems kind of racist to me. As an expert racist, I would know. I would say that this is racist. This looks like something I would make if I was trying to be as racist as possible. Then, um, for whatever reason, Juju the Cow is portrayed as, um, I guess, like Spider-Man? It looks like he's wearing a Spider-Man outfit. I think I think this is what's happening, is that Juju actually plans to get fucked in the ass by all of these men. He's setting up one of those um, blacked memes, with the couch meme. He's about to sexually satisfy all the riptards at once. And that way... They, uh, they will start, stop causing problems for him because uh, he gets fucked in the ass in case you didn't know that. But yeah, he published this unironically and it's sort of like, I mean, that, you know what? That would be funny. If you want to do a proper like Juju comic book where you have like Vito as, as like, you have to make it like a Sonichu parody. Vito can be, um, can be the Chris Chan and then Juju can just be the Sonichu and then be like, go and get fucked in the ass of the Supreme. I will. Thank you, pedophile henchman. And then he's off to have an adventure. He's gonna go find the seven chaos dildos, and he's gonna get. He's gonna anally insert all of them and bring them back to home base. You can even have like a, like a how um, B James Bond had like a you know the MI MI five or whatever the fuck was like behind him. And they would give him orders and stuff. You would have like an MI5 type thing where a bunch of little girls are together and they're giving him instructions like Agent Juju. This are your instructions. And of course, he's rounded them all up. He's kidnapped these girls and and st and, and locked them away to be his agents in, this, in the Cuties HQ, the Cutie Squad. Um, back in the, the, the Hollywood Barbie Dream Doll Mansion, all locked up there. And they're kept there by 80s girl because, you know, he wasted her youth and now she's in her forties and she can't have her own kids. So she just helps him contain the cutie squad and is like her, um, his, his M what's the name of the woman that helps James Bond. Her name is just M right. It's just like called mom. This is, this is my, this is my fan fiction. This is how we can do a full comic book. You want to take this idea or Vito and, um, Dick Masterson are like fighting crime together. You make it so that it's like a Christian Sancho paradise, uh, parody. Juju is going to be 
the Sanchu hero. You have Vito backing him up, giving him emotional support, telling him what to do. And then you have the Cutie Squad and M in the in the Barbie Dream Doll Mansion in the the HQ, the Cuties HQ, giving him advice over the the you know the radio speaker. M is a dude. Oh, sorry. I've I've only watched one James Bond, and it's the one where um they play the the Skyfall song, and M is a woman in that. It, it's definitely a woman who's like the lady at the the the, the headquarters in MI5. This is my thought. This is my thought. This is if I made this, if I made this, in. Uh, <laughs> If I crowdfunded this, I would probably make more money for it than Vito made for his shitty comic book. <laughs> to make a comic book where <laughs> Dick Masterson's running around shoving dildos up his ass and kidnapping 13-year-olds. <laughs> God, that would be so spiteful and it would be really, really funny, but it's really not worth the effort, to be honest. And then he's talking, even Rakeda, by the way. I'm I'm debating how much I want to talk about Rakeda because he sent me a private message which was really really weird. We had like a conversation which was like really fucking weird, and I tried talking to him, and I really I really don't even know what to think about Rakeda anymore. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I don't want to be like a huge dick and just shit all over him. But I I think he was drunk. And he just sent me a message out of nowhere, and then we had like a two hour long conversation. I was on the train. I was traveling at the time. And he's calling me, he's sending me text messages at like midnight his time. Just like complaining. Uh, he's not even complaining. Right? This is. How much do I want to say about this? I will say this because he's, he's shitting. He, he's with Juju shitting on, on the fucking side again. And he does this thing where he messages me and he complains about some shit, some random thing on the site. And then I, in this case, he complained to me about um, how the, the forum treated the black guy, Drexel. And I, I know a little bit about Drexel. I don't like him. I think that he is the epitome of an N-word. I think that he is everything wrong with black people, especially black men. And I think he's a fucking sex pest. Uh, I think he's a literal groomer by the literal definition of grooming. And he comes at me and he defends Drexel. And I say like, uh, I know a bit about him. I don't like him. And I think that people are in the right to say this. And apparently he knows less than me about the drama around Drexel. And then he starts calling me autistic. He's like seething at me, calling me autistic. And I'm because I'm not playing along. Because apparently when he brought up Drexel as like a thing to defend, he's um he's talking in a roundabout way how people in the forum will create a narrative and stick to it, even in the, the face of facts. And he was trying to lay that out using Drexel as an example. But in this case, Drexel was a really poor example to use because number one, I know about his drama. And number two, it's real. I know, I know that it's fucking real. So, and then eventually after hammering down what he's actually trying to say, because he was going about it in this retarded roundabout way, he uh, suddenly lifts up and said, says that he's not complaining. His life is great. He's happy about everything in his life. The Kiwi Farms doesn't matter. He's just remarking to me as a friend how funny it is that my site is so shit and everybody on it is a fucking retard. And he's just, he's just randomly... He's just randomly sending this message to me at midnight in the shower. He says that he's in the shower. He's like, no, I'm just texting my bro at night in the shower. And I'm like, okay. It, it's like, it's like, um, it's like 8 a.m. here. I'm on the fucking train. <laughs> I'm traveling. I got shit to do. Why are you? Why are you messaging me from the shower to tell me how great your life is and how my site sucks using examples that I can absolutely fucking smack down out of your hands as being bullshit because I know that Drexel's a fucking pervert. He's a fucking loser. And you're going to bring that up to me like I'm, I'm some bad thing is happening to him with people shitting on him when he, it's just the truth. That's just what he is. And I, I, I really, I really, I, I'm more reckless now in talking about Nick because I, like I try to keep people on good terms, but I think there is a thing with these people where they, and I, I told him that I can't control narratives about you on the forum if that's what you're complaining about. Because um, I think he was, in the roundabout way, he was complaining about how everyone says that he went to Hedonism 2 on the forum. 
Um, and he says, that's, I think his official line is that's bullshit. He didn't go to hedonism too, or if he did, it was at a different time when the black, when the interracial swinging shit wasn't happening or some shit like that. I don't fucking know. But I tell him that there's nothing I can do to help him in changing narratives. And that's when it swings and is like, well, I'm not actually complaining about anything on the forum. I'm just like remarking to you about how shitty your site is and how funny it is that people are so stupid. And I just wanted to have a nice chat with my friend about how great my life is and how I have a six figure deal with Rumble, seven figure deal, I think is what he says, seven figure deal with Rumble. And yeah, you know, everything's going great. I just wanted to talk to you about how great my life is. And I think with people like Dick and with him, it's like knowing being on good terms with me is not a hall pass to like change online narratives about you. I can't, there's literally, even truthfully, there's nothing that I can say to, to people to change their minds. And I don't bother because I know if I start defending somebody um, overtly, th people have that cognitive thing where they're going to flip out and they're going to stop, you know, they're going to go out of their way to cause somebody problems. So, and I think when people find that out, they get pissed off. And that's when they start doing the Juju the Cow thing where they're, um, trying to <clears throat> to call me out on fucking Twitter. Uh, Juju says, can someone clip Noel's video on me where he talks about being a scorned ex? My statement was, I specifically avoided talking about him. Did not sound like a scorned ex. Now that's been several years. I am confident that I can approach this, this topic um, with clean hands. He says, just for the record, I like Noel. He says this all the time. The motherfucker does not like me. I make fun of him fucking constantly. There's not a single thing about about me that Dick Masterson or Judy the Cow would ever possibly defend. He hates my site. He hates my work. He hates my podcast. Uh, he doesn't like having me on. It's uh, the only reason why he invites me on is to get into a shit flinging contest with his pedophile henchman. And he does not like me, but he always says, ha, 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 I'm in on the joke. I'm in on the joke. I'm the funny man from Hollywood. I'm in on the joke. I like everybody involved. I'm so fucking impartial and above it all. I get fucked in the ass by my, by, uh, in swinging contests. I, I failed to set up threesomes with a BPD woman. I fucked over my girlfriend's entire life. Ha, 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 ha. I like Noel. And then Rikaja says, cope, seethe. And then Dix, uh, Juju says, lol, I genuinely care about Ralph, Noel, you, Medicare. So many people have enjoyed their content. It doesn't bother me to be attacked. I put on a furry cow suit if it brings the families together. Okay, says, look how mad you are. Dick again says, we need to get wife, Noel a wife and get him some kids. Not even joking. Dax, I do not want the kind of woman that you pull. I know you think that you're like a fucking king and you slay mad puss and you crush mad box in LA. I see you with... Uh, Maddox is sloppy seconds and f trying to fuck BPD girls and getting fucked in the ass instead. Whatever kind of girl you can help me get, I don't want. Offer fucking declined. Thank you. It's just like disgusting. Like just because you live in LA does not mean that you have any insights. The things that you have learned about life by being in Satan's pit do not apply to normal people. Your life experiences have no value outside of LA. What you have learned is worthless to everybody except the very narrow caliber person like fucking Vito. So he's going to try to like, how about you get kids? <laughs> how about you get a wife? How about you marry 80s girl now that you've, you've wasted her entire youth? How about it, Juju? At some point, how blown out does your asshole have to be? before you put a ring on it like how many how many third girls do you have to have fucking you before before you're like yeah i should i should stop acting like a man child i mean i'm almost 50 now dax story when he has one and then Rakeda like playing along with it like who the fuck do you people think you are <laughs> I'm, I'm just like i'm surrounded by all the people that I've tried to befriend have now entered into this like midlife crisis where they're, they were, were at a peak and when they were, when they felt powerful, they took strong stances against certain things that made them very attractive as people to know. And then as soon as, as soon as they had a little bit of trouble and the forum started criticizing them just a little bit, they fucking lost it. They gave up everything that they believed in, and now they're just trying to coast along and keep their gravy train going, and they're willing to throw everything, everything that 
jeopardizes their easy life has to go out the fucking window. Any principle, any position, anything is just gone. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you fucking old men and their faggotry. The shitty fucking cars, the shitty fucking... Everything, man. It's disgusting. It's like with the EFF. It's like, I'm so disappointed in you. I'm so disappointed in you people. Um... It goes on and on. Okay, how many times is he mentioning me here? This see thing about Eric. If I ever met Eric July in real life, I would imagine his wife would start dry humping me instinctively going after his wife, because of course. Juju reminds everybody he lives in LA. He's never been a black guy who is a bigger pussy than Eric July Inglewood. Wow. You know, it's like like a Reddit post. As someone who lived in LA, I've seen many black people and many black dicks. And of all the black people that I've had my fun with, Eric Delight is definitely the lamest black person I've ever met. Cool, bro. Cool, Andy Dick. That's awesome. Flamenco says, fucking with Eric July isn't cool. Please make sure the hardcore psychos and internet criminals are aware of that. E.g. your fucking fans, because if you don't remember, the whole shit started over his fan, who he read the fan mail of, or supposedly his fan, but I think it's actually Vito. He read the fan of, the fan mail of, and then said, we, we contacted these people, we did this. No, now it's a hardcore internet psycho and criminal. Not him. Based on the results of the last survey, how many push-ups in a row do you think Noel from Kiwi Farms could do? Five through ten. How many push-ups do you think push-ups in a row do you think Noel Kiwi Farms? Again, I don't even I don't know if that's like some gay fucking joke from a shitty podcast. None, not even A logs watch his podcast. So if this is some kind of like recurring joke, like the water bottle fill line that women can't figure out, like I don't get it. Sorry, bro. Yes, again, third tweet. How many push-ups in a row do you think Noel from Kiwi Farms could do? And this is the Ricada tweet. Vito is a uniquely funny guy. He's a good person, too. He breaks down when people bully him in interviews, but that's normal. I don't need a shield. I take on literally anyone, anytime. That's not a virtuous trait, though. It just means I'll argue with you. Yeah, you'll bring people onto your fucking show to try and farm content. You're going to have to play my clips, boy. I'm not going on your fucking show. You can remind... Play the, play the, the part of the clip where I remind people that you... Uh, Took over a mentally handicapped girl's life and you pimped her out to her friend, to your producer, Riley. And now she does OnlyFans where she shits in her pants um, and dry humps Riley with uh, dirty crap briefs because of you, because she knew you. And then after this week of absolute fucking garbage, um, where Juju is really down bad. Juju and Vito look like they're going to have to be on defense. They're going to get sued. They're going to have to beg people for fucking money out of nowhere. Out of fucking nowhere. Maddox comes back. He is in the last three years. He has published three videos. Um, and I think those other videos were almost two years ago now. And he has decided to post a 50 minute long video about Justin Wang. Half of it is dedicated, is an actual response to the lawsuit where he sued the Stereos Coconuts. And uh, he alleges like a lot of stuff. And it's just like out of nowhere, Maddox comes back. And the video isn't that bad. The video isn't like terrible and embarrassing. Like the, the you don't know what a cuck video is. He does pretty well in making his point and, and it's okay. It's just like a standard run of the mill drama video. Uh, if he made content like this consistently, he would probably do really well on YouTube right now because people love videos like this. But the issue is, is that after coming out of a hiatus for three years to talk about the fucking lawsuit again, who guess who has content now? Guess, guess who now has the ability to completely ignore the fact that he's about to be sued by Eric July for um, fucking with his business uh, and and everything else? Dick. Juju now gets to sit atop this mountain of content because he can milk anything, anything that Dick do, or that Maddox does. Juju can sit there and, and make four four months out of content out of that. Now he has thirty minutes of primo lull suit shit to go over, and you bet that it'll probably be about six months before he stops talking about this video. If Maddox does absolutely nothing else, 
So, well, while I was getting ready to see a nice, healthy, happy decline of uh, Vito Lupito and Juju, I now get to see them uh, reinvigorate their fucking audience with Maddox content. So it's 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 really sad. <laughs> it's really it's like, what is the timing of this? Like, I, I'm actually curious if um, he saw the the drama around Juju and then decided, oh, this is my time to strike. I'm gonna really because it's like a really really edited video. There's so many effects. There's so many like sources and and things lined up. And it's the 50 minutes long. It's like, did he spend like years editing this? Because apparently the video he's, the Wang video he's going on about is several years old at this point. So it's like, did he make this years ago and then just re not release it and then waited for the day that Dick had like a bad day and then publish it thinking that this would be like the appropriate time to do this six years after the fact? I really don't know, man. I got too smug. Yeah, I did. I got too hopeful. Every time I have hope it, uh, is crushed. So like I said, the video isn't like too too stupid. It's very it's milk toast. I'll say that. It's a milk toast video. Uh it's not in, someone said it has a very negative reception, and it has a negative reception because of um this part in particular, I think. But besides that, it's like a very milk toast video. He did okay with it, surprisingly. So by now you're probably wondering why did I have to take this person to court? I took him to court for fraud. This is a screenshot of an advertisement he purchased claiming to represent me and my company. He fraudulently published these false and misleading claims and targeted them directly at me and my fans. He boasted about his harassment campaign on a website called Kiwi Farms, which is a forum dedicated to stalking, doxing, and harassment. Asterios, a guy who calls himself the good boy of comedy, regularly posted on the forums where they doxed my home address and had some choice words to say about me. Why would the good boy of comedy be posting on a hate site like this? That's weird. <sighs> you know what's funny is during the lawsuit, I reached out to Maddox like two or three times and I said like, I really want to know your side of the story. I, I desperately, I just, cause even when I was like friendly with Dick, I really wanted to hear the other side. I thought, I thought it was bizarre that Maddox would remain completely silent and just have like everything taken from him, allow his career to be destroyed, allow his friends to be pulled from him, allow uh, Juju to make a, in, a lot of money by talking about the lawsuit. Well, he talked about it. None at all. The only thing that I've ever heard, this is true. The only thing I've ever heard in regards to Maddox and his lawsuit that was from his side was a long time ago. I, there was a guy that would call in to my um, to my podcast when I still did call in. So this is how long ago it was, and it was the narrator. The narrator is like super popular with like homosexuals on YouTube, and I think now he tries to pretend that he didn't know me at all, but he did, and he listened to the podcast and he called in at one point and uh, actually he called me in private, and I talked to him, and he outlined that he. Because he, he was sympathetic to Maddox. He refused to say anything bad about him. I, I pressed him. I said, what the fuck has happened with you and Maddox that you refuse to like join in on this? And so we had a, a talk, and he outlined to me how Maddox took him in private and just, and laid out his lawsuit and showed him all the things that Asterios and, and Juju had done to try and deliberately fuck with him and to get his uh, friends in LA to not talk to him, to get him booted out of comedy clubs and shit. And he said that he was very persuaded by the evidence that Maddox had. And uh, that's why he refused to, to join in on the anti Maddox team. I, and when I heard this, I, I desperately wanted him to talk to me. I messaged him like three times like, bro, I promise you, I promise you, I will give you a fair shake. And this was before the Drop Kiwi Farm stuff. The site was still up on Cloudflare. My podcast was like getting started. I had just done a bunch of interviews and they're very fair. I don't feel like I was mean to anybody that I talked to. I talked to Montegraph. I talked to that uh, woman who was trying to sue me. And I said, like, you can listen through these. I promise you that I will give you a fair interview. And he never replied. And even now, I would, I would love to talk to Maddox and figure out, like, I mean, what his, his side was, even though it's been so long now. And he, he hates us. <laughs> the, one, the one group of people on the world who would probably at this point in time, because of how much they hate Juju and they hate Vito, 
would love to have a great excuse to to push his shit in in the way that he doesn't like to have his push his shit pushed in. Um, hates us, <laughs> so it sucks because I, I I still I'm still like I'm extremely intellectually curious as to what what happened. Uh, he goes into it in detail, kind of, but only about the stereos. He doesn't go into anything else. There's lots of questions that want to be answered. Everyone hates Josh. It's true. It's so true. So true, King. That's it. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Because we're about out, at about two hours. I, um... I do not... want to, uh, eat up all the content just in case... Just in case there is, um... A drought in the next two days. I will save the Ralph stuff for Friday. There's some Ralph Ralph Extended Universe stuff, and I'm going to keep those tabs open. And I will uh, just talk about them Friday. So we'll cut it off in about two hours. Um, there is one more thing. I do have the Reddit Moment of Zen. This is uh, a news story from R Europe. That says, Jewish man confesses to writing anti-Semitic graffiti on front of French restaurant. Um, this person replies saying, friendly fire with 871 uh, votes. Bro was a victim of himself. Uh, this thread was locked, by the way. The moderators don't allow uh, new comments to it. Uh, Thora says, when the demand for anti-Semitism is greater than the supply, and then on old Reddit, which is where I first viewed this, um, his tag for this was that he's German. So this is a German guy saying this. Uh, Octave Ergobel says, insert Willie meme here. I don't know what that means. Unless he means, this guy just says, oi vey, and has 250 upvotes in the R Europe subreddit, which is crazy. Flat, false flag anti-semitism many such cases and then Curti Shu tries to correct the record says there's also such a thing as flying fish but they don't represent the majority of the species um yes they do flying fish represent 100 percent of the flying fish species but nice try uh i'm gonna i'm gonna um actually you on that shit motherfucker if you're gonna um actually him i get to um actually you and be more technically correct This guy blames America. God, Europeans are fucking crazy. They hate America. Europeans hate Americans so much. This guy says, uh, this is what this is what happens, comes from importing American politics on discrimination. People would prefer the power and drama that comes with being a victim to actually improving relationships between different parts of a community. Um, so yeah, this is America's fault somehow. American politics are so toxic that we have to, that the Europeans have to import American political uh, perspectives in order to have enough drama in their life. And this guy asks, why, though? You'll find out when you're older, my boy. You'll find out when you're older. Okay, as I said, I will keep the rough stuff for Friday. So that, uh, just in case, there's an ace in my ace in my sleeve. Um, we will always, we will definitely have some content for Friday. No, I mean, just a little bit of stuff. You're not messing out on too much rough stuff. But hopefully uh, some, there will be some more developments by Friday to, to give it a full context as opposed to a half story. All right, um, we're going into chill mode. Get this done, and then everybody can enjoy the rest of their Tuesday, and I can enjoy being a sleepy boy and going to bed. Someone notified me that when I do super chats on Odyssey, it fucks up my um my overlay. So I'm gonna try doing this differently this time. Give me a second. All right. I want to. I have to buy myself time to think about what I want to do for an outro song. The guy, um, as I'm pulling up my donation alert shit, the guy that did uh, the Richmond North of Richmond has put out another song, and I don't like it. In case you're curious, what my take is. Um, I don't really like it. I think that it's mediocre. The other one was the other one was a hit because he talks about Epstein, which is pretty based. 
I guess they got to him this time. Um, Anonymous420 says, YouTube short video. Oh, my fucking... We're off to a great start. Wonderful. But this is the fucking fish. No, it's not. Okay. Only in Spartanburg. You got three people. All three of us alone, right? They wrong, they wrong, you wrong. You right, right? Bruh, shut the fuck up. You don't get your goddamn groceries, nigga. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, bro, I'm black. Oh, yeah, I do say nigga because I'm black, bro. The fuck? I ain't black, right? The fuck are you talking about? Only in Spartanburg. <laughs> What, the whole video is that he says the n word and the For guy the is like people. stunned in silence. He doesn't know how to react to that. Oh, I guess because he said the n word, so all the other black people are like, "What? What? What the fuck? You is a Hispandex or an? In he looks Indian. You're Indian. You can't say the n word, dude. Indians are the key to our racism. Okay, we need more Indians because." It we don't have to worry about miscegenation with Indians. White women will never fuck an Indian man, okay? So there there are no curry chasers out there. And they're also racist. And they, they work the tech jobs. They can work the tech jobs in the bug factories while we whiteies can go out and homestead and not work in the, the bug factories, okay? The Pajits will balance everything out. Vidigar out Ramashami, he is the light that we need, the light in this life. No, we do. We need, more, we need more Pajits. How many Pajits are even in the U.S.? Like a million? <laughs> um, alrighty. Where is this? Uh, the president of Nintendo for five says, I wasn't actually drunk last stream. I kept fucking up my super chat in panic because I'm too autistic to be alive. I have since killed myself. I'm sorry. It sucks, man. You should have called that number instead of killing yourself. You should have uh, listened to the family friendly news song and learn not to kill yourself. The president of Nintendo for $5 says, I saw two African-American gentlemen having a lively theological debate shortly before they opened a fire on each other. And I was wondering... What are your thoughts on consubstantiation versus stan transubstantiation in regard to the Eucharist? Um, in regards to the Eucharist, I don't know how that question ties into the Eucharist. I I like to say that um, I like to I like to say that it's transubstantiation because then it's really metal. It's really fucking metal to literally eat flesh and drink blood, okay? It's kind of pussy to be like, no, it's a metaphor. No, it is unambiguous in the Bible. That is literally the blood and, and, and flesh, okay? So don't be, a, don't be a pussy. Don't be a pussy about it. Oh, no, I don't want to be a cannibal. Fuck you. You're going to be a cannibal. You're going to like it. You're going to say thank you, too, motherfucker. Uh, neighbor for five says most esteemed and venerable Kiwi Daimo. You are a very handsome and infinitely reasonable individual. Thank you very much. I agree wholeheartedly. I appreciate it. Finally, people are seeing it my way. Fino Hungarian imperialist for $15 says AI teams repeatedly inventing the neighbor detector and then having to throw it out is a great absurdist comedy. Man can rake not because he didn't see it, but because he is not allowed to acknowledge its existence. Maybe the rake is illu Ill illusory. Let me check again. No, it still hit me in the face. It's a very uh, avant-garde way of describing the concept of having to fix the same. It's a, it's a, it is very technical. It's a, that you're, when you are building something from scratch, you'll usually encounter the same set of problems that people who built it before you had already found and solved. Um, but it is a great metaphor for the human condition right now. President of Nintendo for five says, do you have any thoughts on FPGAs? They have a lot of amazing Nintendo related applications, hardware emulation via Mr. For instance, or high speed image upscaling for your favorite retro Nintendo games on modern displays. Imagine playing Kickmaster in high def on a real top loader. Homie, I don't know what the fuck that means. Is that like a graphic reload for like an old emulator? I hope people enjoy, you know, their Pokemons and whatever high definition shit that they want. I, do, I could not possibly be compelled to care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, President Tino says the same thing two more times. Well, you know what? If you're going to give me $15, let's see what an FPGA actually is, because he submitted it three times. Field programming gate arrays. A field programming gate is an integrated server designed to be configured after manufacturing. Uh, I have no fucking idea what this is. 
has anything to do with the graphics quality of old ROMs, but I hope that people enjoy it. Glow in the dark for 10 says the fact I can see a 14 year old's opinion at any time without any warning should be a violation of my human rights. Dude, it should be. We, it's a violation of everyone involved. The kid should not be on the internet. You should not be seeing their opinions. If we worked this out, it would be a, a much better world for everybody. Okay. I completely agree. Um, James Boone for five says November India golf golf echo Romeo. Hopefully he didn't just launch a nuke somewhere. <laughs> Don't hopefully he didn't offend somebody who knows who was in our. Thank you for our service for your service by the way. Any November India golf golf echo Romeos who are in the audience who served in our far country. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, going overseas and killing brown people. President Nintendo for five says, I don't know what my last message sent three times, but enjoyed the money. I guess I don't know. I, if, I know you don't know want electronics or packages into your PO box, but what about letters? If a tranny wants to send you a bomb, can they send instructions on how to make it so you can build it yourself? Shout out Rotolo too. Yes. If you want to send me letters in the PO box, you may do so. The PO box is on the contact page uh, for the Kiwi Farms. It's not the one that has uh, my attorney's address. It's on the right side of the contact form. Dot 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 for 10 says, come on, Josh, you just got to get some puss puss, Josh. You got to smash that box, Josh. You too pent up, Josh. You got to dress up as a cow and get fucked in the ass, Josh. Just loosen up, dog. Bro, if I just moved to LA and got fucked in the ass, man, I would totally think Juju the cow and Beto are funny. The moment you take a plastic dick up the ass in a failed threesome, you're like, yeah, now I get it. Vito is actually really funny. And he's not a creepy sex pest at all. I totally understand now. That's literally what happens. Um, neighbor for five says, Kiwi Daimo, I think the phrase Maddox sloppy seconds is Franz Ferdinand hitting the pavement. I hope this is the start of some new hilarity. I was not the one that came up with the term Maddox's sloppy seconds. Maddox did. That was his one good comeback the entire time because someone kept pestering him about how he got cucked and how 80s girl was with dick now. And he just said, I hope he enjoys my sloppy seconds. And it was the most cold blooded thing that motherfucker has ever said in his entire life, including his entire library of articles shitting on children. Uh, he'll, <laughs> I think he probably peaked with that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Thank you, Odyssey folks. Romberger for two says the jury is instructed to ignore those squealings. Let the record show that the defendant is fat. As jurors, you are not able to be persuaded by pepperoni. The court finds Norm Macdonald legally funny. <laughs> I mean, he did laugh about 9-11 for five minutes straight. That's pretty funny. Daniel Larson stand for $20 says happy Tuesday. Jurors, I please enjoy this one minute belated video. I made of Terry A. Davis many years ago. Okay, fine. Let's see it. There was a trick for this. What was the trick to see the video with uh, without confirming your age? Tell me in chat. I'll read the next super chat and come back to it in a second. Twinkle Tard for $100 says, Have you seen Louis Rossman's new Koi Pond stream? I have not. That sounds very real. I'm sure he set up a Koi Pond because he seems like he's about to lose his fucking mind. Every video he puts out, he's angrier than the last. Let's see what my chat said. Um, I don't, nobody, nobody has, uh, given me any, any information about how to get around this. There's, yeah, there's some trick with the URL. I'll play it on my other one if I don't figure it out in time. Uh, Jack Scalfani, Jax Calfani for 20 says, Aunt Myrna's farty queef style. That's fucking vile. Thank you very much. Uh, N-word dropper for 20 says, hello, Jersh. I drank last night when I was awoke from my super. I created this. Behold the Kiwi MK1. All righty. Let's see. Very we good. Open them and stick your head out and yell. I'm as mad as hell. And I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm a human being. God damn it. Mode. What is this a reference to? Is this like the voice of the the voice lines of the mech, like like put in my voice and really high pitch? 
this this looks cool what the fuck is this armored core six okay that does look cool thank you for your your edit your editing video i appreciate it the the the, uh, the laughing is from the video just saying no it's not obvious thank you inward dropper Cole Cole for prices. What do you think about Sven's accusations against you? You can keep listening if you think he says something right. Okay. Sven Stoffels? Because. Sven and Borzoi see at Kiwi Farms. Just Jesse by Colonel J. Oh. Wow. Elite members of the Revolutionary Army of Podcasters, the podcast race, assert with no evidence that Kiwi Farms is property of U.S. intelligence, an international asset to Zog, whose purpose is to destabilize dissidents. They also believe that Josh has no real politics aside from free speech. So, I mean, I guess to preface it, like, Kiwi Farms is, an, is a, is a like U.S. intelligence a property, or COINTELPRO property, whatever you want to call it. It is an international uh, asset to Zog intelligence services. Okay. That's all it is. Um, that's, why it that's why it has been completely blown offline. It's there to destabilize. Uh, yeah, it has. We've been deplatformed at every single level multiple times. I just find new providers and plug it back in. Uh, I don't know how I haven't done anything illegal, so therefore there's no criminal issue to be concerned with. I can just keep doing this forever. So that's why we're not blowing offline because I'm not. I'm literally not doing anything wrong. Dissidency, really. I mean, that's all it is. It is taken like the, the site is basically it's sector right wingers, rightoids. And what it is is it revels in trying to turn people into little cows. And it does not exclude actual political dissidents Why that are trying it? to actually do things. Like, it's not, it's one thing. Why would it? Why would it? Why, why are act, quote unquote actual pro political dissidents excluded from anything? In fact, people who are quote unquote actual pl political dissidents are more liable to be criticized because they are trying to effectuate actual change. People who are politically involved are less protected from critical speech. Because of what their 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 field is, a private person is more protected because they're not trying to stick their dick in everybody else's business. When you're when you are, you're not protected. So therefore, to say that like that people like Nick Fuentes deserve more protection is asinine. It's completely false. The a log Nick Fuentes was a fraud and a grifter. Fine, okay. uh, to go after my friends or anyone that I. Why? Well, uh, uh, how do you say that and not realize what a faggot you sound like? I'm okay with them doing this to the lefties. I'm okay with this, them doing this to just apolitical retards. I'm not even okay with them going after quote unquote actual political distance like Nick Fuentes. But my friends, my internet friends, we're the good guys. We're the good guys. You can't do that to us. We're the podcast ways. We don't get, you can't make fun of us. I know. And just try to put that, put everyone on the same level, and then make the debate about that. So that person, Crunk Lord, that I mentioned before, who was like, who was pretending <laughs> that the, <laughs> the uh, conservative Canadian truckers thing was going to be a revolution. Like he's a he's a Kiwi Farms admin, or at least mod. I don't remember exactly. I think he's a tech. Team. But anyway, so I said so as much. And um, I, believe he, I believe he helps on the. I believe, I believe he helps Josh out with tech stuff on some. I don't know. Yeah, what that's what I think I, he does. I, I, he runs the Fediverse. All the weird shit that's not the Kiwi Farms that is alt tech that. Crunk Lord is a huge proponent of. I let him run. That's what he does. I think it might have, it might have even just been on the Fetty side of things, but yeah, he helps. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Josh sure. texts. But I think Josh pretends to be apolitical, or he says he's apolitical, just like Grafted. He's not political. I'm just out here to say the N word, and oh my god, how did I get in trouble? And why are people noticing that I did a bad job? So anyway, I get this. Well, he, he, I think Josh does like the the Schrodinger's uh, politicizations when when it's convenient, when when there's like you know like when he's got to you know make it, when he feels like he has to make a stand, then he's very political and he's a free speech absolutist. But when it's about anything else, then yeah. he'll well, be he's treat a, to. Basically, I'm I, I'm just a political um, admin of this free speech board. You know, he's a he's a he's he's a free speech warrior when he has stepped on a rake and his website is getting some backlash somewhere that it deserves. Then he's a free speech absolutist. Like when he's getting. What am I not though? Like, what what is? When do I when do I contradict that? I don't. I don't think I've ever infringed on anybody else's ability to speak either. I don't know when he, when he's when he's when he's under attack because. Him and right. his, user, his user base that he totally doesn't control and has no responsibility for. Can True. You, uh, has attacked somebody that has a lot of power and money and know-how and he's getting taken out. It's like other people that he has attacked and allowed his user base to sort of chill against uh, aren't siding with him. This is very bad and they should be because from a free speech. That's the thing that happens. Okay. Are you on mute because you walked away? Hello? Why are, why are people who, who have more friends in the tech industry... Again, 
Why is that? Why is it not okay to to criticize them as well and make fun of them? I don't understand. Liz Fong Jones is a sex pest. Liz Fong Jones is a low cow. Liz Fong Jones has been credibly credibly accused of rape to the point where they have to address it on Twitter. Why is that? Why is that not? Why can I not make fun of them for that? I believe that I should be able to. No, I, I, I muted for a second because I was I was opening up one of you because I was looking for this comment. Oh, <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I heard the tab. I heard a percussive thump and I thought maybe you left the room or something. Like, oh no. But anyway, was, no, I think that was you coming back coming in because oh. I was opening up your stream. Oh, okay. <laughs> it seemed like, oh, okay. It was like that even makes your sense. voice that came through. But anyway, I have this yeah. uh, I have this comment here. Thanks for calling out Graf for being a lolly pedo. First of all, I didn't do that. He is definitely a lolly fan. What I said when people accuse Graf of being a pedo, I say he's not worth defending. It's not worth your time because he's he has no solidarity with anybody. It's because he says he's apolitical. So if someone calls you a pedo. I just shrugged my shoulders. I'm not gonna stick my neck out for him. So anymore. that was what I said. That, uh, so then he goes on. How, Kiwi Farms. Guy, whoever the fuck is speaking, this guy is the biggest faggot on the planet. And you sh I have no idea who this is. I know nothing about him. I'm listening only to this three and a half minutes that I've heard so far. You should never associate with this guy because this guy has just said explicitly that he will stand by a pedophile and completely look the other way as long as, as he's quote unquote on their team. He will allow himself to be surrounded with fucking chomos if they're benefiting him and his political agendas. And that is the worst kind of person. That is the dumbest kind of person. That person does not have any... Um, is is extremely short-sighted and extremely stupid if your friends or just whoever decides to be on your team you're a fucking idiot you don't know how to put together an actual team uh you're you're desperate and flailing and the, the fact that you would you would allow someone to be called a pedophile who's not a pedophile just because you don't agree with them politically is the most like insipid pathetic fucking thing that you could ever possibly say about yourself in terms of like your your integrity and your principles Whoever this guy is, is a fucking loser. As a forum, doesn't have a political position, but its owner is explicitly political. Would you like, would you like to unpack that a little bit, Borzoi? This is just like, or should I read the It's a community of like tens of thousands of people all over the place. Uh, I, I maintain a, a cohesive community because it's not a political entity. The only thing that the Kiwi Farms stand for is that the Kiwi Farms should exist. Um, and I try and my personal politics are all over the place. I think it would be pretty hard to pin me down anywhere on a political compass. Um, I would like to think that my positions are more nuanced than just I'm extremely, you know, conservative author authoritarian or whatever the fuck. I, I feel like I have a, a pretty informed opinion. Um, I just don't use my platform to argue that because I don't care. The way that the world is set up right now, my opinions on almost everything do not fucking matter. The only thing that I can make a difference in is creating a more open internet that people are allowed to partake in, which could eventually lead to change somewhere down the road. But right now, just trying to use my platform both to promote free speech and then also to promote my extremely weird niche political philosophies is a doomed task. That's why I do not take a stand. The entire comment, and we'll go back through. I'll read the oh, entire. Okay, well, me, well, I'll read the, the entire script, and let's go back point by point by point. Kiwi Farms as I know, a forum. I know, I know he's. I know he's a free. He, he likes to position yeah. himself as a, basically a free speech absolutist. But then, okay, what else? Right. Is if the all he's like, if he, if that's the extent to his politics, then all he's arguing for is negative liberty in in a very narrow view of negative liberty. He what, what's his, what's his political position on living in. In a society, what kind of what kind of well, people? There's there's not just like, I'm not just talking about like parties or political groups. Like what? Who are his constituents? Who does he advocate for? Who are your people? No one. <laughs> it's like these guys have one extremely narrow definition of what a person is. You you or it's like an RPG character. Um, let's do party affiliation. Uh, put your where? What are your coordinates on your political compass? What's your strength and dexterity and wisdom? And uh, do you love Hitler? That's a checkbox. It's like you got if you don't fill out if you like send back your form and it just has your name and then a big fuck you written on your political compass. It's like whoa, uh, this guy, what an idiot! He doesn't even know what he's doing. He's so silly. To participate in politics is to participate in a political realm, to have a constituency, to have a demographic that you advocate for. Josh called out Raph for the. And there's no, oh, there's no such thing as the free speech race, so. Hmm. Josh called out Graf for the pedo anime shit a while ago as well. I don't really care. He's just like, because Graf is a lol cow, Josh made fun of him. That's, that's the extent of politics on QB So Graf is a lol cow. Cows. I know having, this is where it gets annoying. I know having your docs online sucks. So again, here's the rightoid that cannot operate outside of like, so it's yourself. So you're saying Kiwi Farms is bad because self-interest. Can't, yes. can't, can't possibly process that there's a systemic problem. That there's a broader issue. I know having your docs online sucks, but it would be somewhere else if it wasn't on Kiwi Farms. Yes. So you know, if, I was, that argument? If, I wasn't, if I wasn't, if I wasn't occupying this Palestinian home, it would just be another Jew. Same argument. Exactly. Aside from the docs hosting, which is like end of sentence. There's no aside from docs hosting. There's no aside from being, from being a Fed um, asset like that. 
I feel like you and Josh would agree politically on quite a bit. This is this, I have seen the same comment verbatim so many times. <laughs> I've seen the same comment verbatim so many times, but he hosts my friend's docs, so therefore we can't agree on anything. And he's just a Jew. If you don't, if you don't do what I like, if you don't uh, act completely within the boundaries that I've arbitrarily defined as the rules of engagement for my people alone, you're just a Jew. Sorry. Anytime, like there's any anti Kiwi Farms thing is mentioned, and we don't really make a habit of doing it, but I've seen this every time. Aside from the stuff that makes him 100% totally your enemy, I think you would agree on, on quite a bit. It's like, no, I don't, because he won't take down docs. He won't stop doxing. He won't stop his people from doxing. He won't stop hosting docs. He does everything. He makes every excuse he can to say that what he's doing is not doxing, right? I don't, I don't know anything about what docs of mine is on Kiwi Farms, as this person says, but that's not my motivation for why I don't like it. I don't like the site because this is what it engages in. in pretend, like, what is the point of your free speech absolutist? So why are you making fun of Graf for like anime pedal shit? Anime pedal shit falls under free speech. If you're a free speech absolutely, what are you making fun of him for? I'm not you're a free speech absolutist. Because you want to host absolutist. docs because your job is to host docs. For That's what Kiwi Farms well, is for. I mean, I keep pausing the wrong fucking video. I'm not a free speech absolutist. I, um... Very specifically, there are carve-outs for... Um... Actionable material. Which I could get into the, the particulates of, but I'm not going to. I'm just... That's a, that's a straw man. He doesn't even know. So I don't know why he's thinking about me if he doesn't know anything about me. The argument for that is, well... I know. I'll speak, I mean, you're free to not like something just as long as you don't actually ban it or have the government involved. Right. So that's also, that's fair. Always- that's also fair. I can make fun of someone for doing something, even if I say that you shouldn't be criminally prohibited from that, from doing that. It boils down to, I mean, this is how libertarians got their shit wrecked. It's like, well, as long, you know, as long as it's a private company, well, the private companies completely took you off the internet. Right. So aside from this comment, the private but, companies in the United States are like a conglomerate of like the government interest and specific monopoly contracts. And then also. So that doesn't align at all. So somebody, I don't know, because I because I made fun of Graf two weeks ago, and, just, and single-handedly put him out of business, by the way, right? He totally, like, he's he's quitting because I made fun of him. I'm going to take credit on that, because that's what people say. <laughs> Every time something bad happens to somebody, they damn Sven and TRS. Like, yes, I did that. Treat me with more respect, and it'll stop happening to you. This um, is the right stuff. I didn't <laughs> know that. Uh, somebody like somebody some sent me a clip songs. of Josh's podcast or whatever, where he was making fun of Graf. Mm. Apparently. And I, I watched some of it, because instead of just to see what he would say, I was wondering. Um, and he was making fun of Graf for putting his own money into keeping Post online. And uh, he, he explicitly said that if that ever happened with Kiwi Farms, if I had to put my own money to keep that site on line, it would be over. I would turn well, off my computer. Question, whose, money, whose money is keeping Kiwi Farms? Well, aside, just aside from that, before we get into that, I want to harp on this a little bit. He says that he would, you know, he would close his laptop, he would never use the internet again, and he would be living in the hills of Serbia where he could buy X amount of acres for $5,000, and now you would just never hear from him again. Oh, so is this the politics I've heard so much about? That's that, what I'm that saying. Like, this is how this is the politics this man cares. If he cared about this stuff, he would never say anything. Like, why would he just check out? This says that he has absolute. He has no solidarity with anyone politically. True. I think that you're all stupid faggots. I think that you're all stupid faggots, and the fact that you're stupid faggots is why you have not accomplished anything. It's why, despite how terrible things are and the obvious lower quality of life that everybody in the United States is living with, you're such a stupid, annoying faggot, and you say such dumb shit that you cannot compel a single normal person who isn't terminally online like fucking Graf to align with you at all. You have zero persuasive ability, you have nothing to show for your life, and you cannot convince the common working man that you have the capability of leading the nation they will continue to vote for the same fucking people over and over again because at least they have something to show for it you have nothing that's why like i don't i, I like it's, it's not me keeping it back it's not your fucking docs on kiwi farms that's stopping you from taking over the world and killing every jew on the planet it's that you're a fucking loser and everyone sees you as a fucking loser and that's why you have that's who are your constituents nobody nobody fucking votes for you i think this is the the national justice party right what fucking winners they are Unless there's money, it's just, it's and just the money is nationalism, movie review nationalism. It's not even nationalism. That's, this is in, this is rugged individualism. This is not so rugged individualism. This is I'm going to quit and surrender if the uh, if the FBI money stops coming in, if the CIA yeah. payoff stops. Uh, I, my site has ten thousand logins a day. Ten thousand logins a day. My podcast has three thousand viewers twice a week. My point is, if I cannot convince my own user base to fund my expenses, like Graf has been unable to convince his users to fund his expenses, it's time to give up. Either you're so bad at the business that you can't run it and you should fucking stop, which is Graf's case, or your own users hate you enough that they're not going to fund the site they fucking use, which is also Graf's case. Graf is bad at business and he's alienated his own support base to the point where they will not give him money to continue running 
setting a site that they use because they don't like him. My point is, if my own community hated me to the point where I and refused to do anything to give me money to run my own site, I would not get a job flipping burgers to run the Kiwi Farms because that's fucking pathetic. I would move the fuck on. That's not an illogical thing to say. That's smart. That's that's that is the epitome of logic. I'm doing what's right for myself. It's not. <laughs> Do you not do you not realize that most people have jobs and when they want to support a website that they use they can use their fucking credit card or send a check in the mail or use Bitcoin or something when you have real people who use your your site you can actually use those people to fund your operations you don't have to rely on your own money or the federal government usually people pay you money for a service that they enjoy how do you not know I, I know that they're not libertarian but I think most people have an understanding of how uh, 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 capitalism works, even if they don't agree with it. Coming in, because because that, that site is not being fucking supported by its users. Those the users of Kiwi Farms are not people who shell out money to keep a site. They're the same kind of people that use post. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, they are. My the site is one hundred percent community funded. Um, the podcast makes a decent amount of money, which helps pay with my living expenses, and then I get significant cryptocurrency donations every single month. Um, from uh, granted, I get a lot of small donations, but most of it is a um, handful of people who do a hundred dollars a month every month. And that's that's how I keep the lights on. Cryptocurrency donations, mostly Monero and Bitcoin. They're just cheap fucks that want to use a free thing and never. And the idea of giving the owner of a site a dime is like a laughable. Like why would I? Why would I give him my identity and my payment identity? I would I would get doxxed. Uh, I can't trust that guy. He's stupid. He's like, this. The it's the internet. Um. Uh, that's the exact opposite. I have done. I have worked very hard for years to maintain a level of trust with my community. Where they know that if they support me, even if they turn on me really hard and start cyberbullying me off off site, I'm not going to use their payment information to hurt them. Which, in case you're wondering, I think is something that Graph has done, which is probably why a lot of people don't trust him with their information. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure though that he had something where he used payment information against somebody. Um, so yeah, people do trust me with their payment details, but I don't actually process payments in a typical way. I just accept Bitcoin. I teach people how to use Bitcoin, which is effectively untraceable from my perspective. Like the internet piker libertarian, where everything is, like if you provide a service to the internet and it doesn't have like an admission price, you're stupid and I'm here to take advantage. That's the kind of people that run that, run that site. So it's not being paid by them. It's being paid by US intelligence. I have no evidence of that, but that's, that's what I believe. Because, I mean, and this guy and is a guy who's stupid. already... People like the site. It's one of the last sites that you can say what you want to say on it. People pay for it because it's a rarity that they know that if they lost because they, it was not paid for, it wouldn't exist anymore. They wouldn't go to a, a subreddit or some other, you know, like if, if one website closes down, like your your automotive forum closes down, you just go to our cars or whatever the fuck on Reddit. You can't replace the Kiwi Farms with a subreddit. It doesn't exist. If it's gone, it's gone. And it's gone forever. And nobody will be able to, to, to start a Kiwi Farms from scratch right now because they'll get shut down and they won't have the, the cumulative resources and and people that I have on the forum. That's why they pay for it. He surrendered. He's already left the country. He lives somewhere in the hills of Serbia, as he says. So it's like, where, what are the politics? Is he trying to get back to America? No. Isn't it funny how it's always these expats <laughs> yep. that, ha that apparently have the, the strongest political opinions about how people, you know, trying to affect any kind of change in the United States are doing it all wrong. He, he is so... He is such like a lost little boy. It's like, what do you mean you're, you don't have politics? What do you mean that you're, you're not going to be, be politics, man? Why are you not? I'm politics, man. Why would you, why would somebody not be politics? He's like a redditor. He's like a like a tranny. If you're not pro trans, then you're anti trans. If you're not a far right wing extremist that goes on the and the 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 white people podcast race podcast like the right stuff, and you don't vote NJP and you don't promote NJP and you don't ban the left way, then you are a left way. Like fuck you, faggot. You're not gonna strong arm me into supporting your your, your gay cringe party. Fuck you. Yep. It's funny uh, how that works. Very disney. So the the, 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 ex, the expat. I know. I, I just like I just like using the word na uh, nationals for everything. But the, the, all these expat nats are always like the because because Josh is a, is a Moldbug fan. It's yeah, always these expat nats that have the that are really into reactionary. Pol I I Moldbug is a political guy and he's like a monarchist. The only thing I like about Moldbug is his terminology for what he calls the cathedral. This is a concept that's exi existed since Kaczynskiism. It's gone by many names, but I just use the term cathedral, which is why they assume that I'm like a, a monarchist Moldbug supporter, which. I'm I, I vaguely know anything about in case you're curious politics or or republican politics really weird how that works you know you support these different these different uh group well, I mean, you support these different individuals in the united states but uh not not enough to put your money where your mouth is mm. and live in the united states and live with the consequences of what their ideas might bring about mm. 
Oh, yeah. People in Serbia yeah. have no idea what the consequences of American politics are. You dumb faggot. Nobody in Serbia has ever dealt with the consequences of American voters. This is a fucking idiot. I still pay taxes, by the way, because I'm an expat. I still have to pay taxes. The only country in the world where you have to pay taxes as an expat. I'm not sure where else we can go with that. I just want to point that out. Like, there is there is no common ground with uh, white nationalism and Kiwi farms. Any accidental common ground on it you may see is accidental, and you should remove yourself from that space. It's not a good place to be. He was. He will. He has basically said he will never have solidarity with anybody. He did it as an own on graph. I know, but it's. I think it's. I think it's uh, the truth that like. Uh, well, when, well, when people tell you who they are, just believe them. Yep. And that's who he is. <laughs> Yeah, these guys are gay. These guys are super fucking gay. I don't know who this guy is, but... Yeah, listen to that that diatribe where it's like... It's like fucking Anakin Skywalker. You're either with me or you're my enemy. Like, simmer down. How about this? How about this as a political strategy? Don't alienate fucking everybody. Don't make people choose between supporting your gay uh, uh, fringe coalition and being your friend. Or being in your in your area because you know what when you are able to network and you're able to get along with people they're much more likely to support you one of the reasons by the way here here's just an aside he mentions that my website has no political purpose and I let all these fucking lib shits and faggots and trannies and shit use my forum it's just the same as all the the base rifoids and whiteies do you know why I do that you know why I try to sh I try to keep the site as open as possible because I want people to enjoy what I enjoy. And then when they're on the site and they see the things that are on the site, their opinions might actually change just a little bit just by being exposed to it. And even if it doesn't, they might see active internet censorship of a site that they use and say, this is bad. I don't want this. Even though I am a left cu lefty cuckold, tranny homosexual, I don't like that the things that I like are being shut down for no reason. I do not support internet censorship. And then I have made a friend across the barrier who may support me on certain things that we agree with. And then those things might get actioned into the real world because I have reached out to these people who don't align with me 100%. If I, if I excluded people from my circle who did not align with me 100%, I would have Nobody. There is not a single fucking person in this world who aligns with me 100%. So compromise is necessary everywhere if I'm going to get along in my day-to-day -day life. And these guys have no concept of that. Either you are you are ready to, to gas the kikes and you're ready to send all of them negras back to Africa or you're no friend of his. Either you don't host docs of his friends in specific or you're no friend of his. Like he has this list of things that you have to align with 100%. Otherwise, you're not his friend. And what does that get him? It gets him being the, the fucking podcast race with the NJP with no votes and no power and just seething about a fucking drama forum because... Um, he doesn't understand why, why people can't be friends with him. And it's like, because you're a fucking loser and you're exclusionary uh, to a fault. Uh, I, I, how, how does somebody, I know this guy, he does like a, it's like a daily podcast. He does this shit every day, right? He does, or every week. He has a weekly pod, I'll say be friendly, say a weekly podcast. But he's been doing this for years. TRS has been around for like a decade at this point, right? And he hasn't figured this out. He hasn't clicked that if you push everybody away and force people to look think with you 100% that you'll never achieve anything. And he hasn't figured it out yet. He does this every week. He thinks his entire life is dedicated to his politics. And he hasn't figured out the most fundamental fucking thing that if you alienate everybody, then you don't have any friends. I don't know. I don't know why uh, that, 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 that's really irritating to listen to. This guy like smugly condescend that uh, this guy, he's no, got no politics. He's not a real person. He doesn't have a political affiliation. He's not he's barely even a human being because he doesn't have a party that he votes for in the U.S. of A. Okay, you fucking retard. I hope that you got your $5 worth, Cole Cole. Faggot. Steven Rith for one says, can you withdraw Superberry from Odyssey, Rumble, or Kick? I can do, um, yes, all three. Um, I don't think I have Superberries on Kick, though. That might be changing in the future. Ice Mexican pretend says the Coom cannons already. General Josh say the word and all enemies of Kiwi Farmer Sand will be doused in liquid hot baby gravy. Long live the Blockland Bulwark. <laughs> That's an extremely vile message, but thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> Stephen Rith for one says the furry took the grenade, then got his hand exploded. The attacker didn't even get a chance to throw it. Yeah, I don't know how he fucked up so bad that they're like, oh my god, it's like a grenade with a three second fuse right so someone before he pulled the pin was ready to grab it from him it's pretty impressive 
Holy Hal for two says, keep up the base work as always. Josh, you are my nibba. Thank you very much, Hal. I appreciate it. Meowga one or me three zero WG one meow guy says for two dollars, bro. You didn't read my email about the designs. Please, Josh. I all the work I do for clients is so cucked. I need to balance it out. I do have your email, um, but you're not the artist that I was expecting to get into. The guy that drew the fucking kiwi hold it together shirt. For the love of God, get in touch with me. I need you to finish your design because I want to run it as soon as possible. Um, I'll look at your stuff too. I don't, but I, I had something in mind already. Is the issue. Maybe you can take it and fix it up with the other guy, like, pull out the background and shit. I don't know. I'll have to fix it if that guy does not message me. Uh, B. Jockney for $50 says, check out this excellent self-defense video. Okay. It says Derek Comedy, so I already know. It's already spoiled. It's a joke thing. Hi, I'm self-defense instructor Brett Kaywood, and in this video, I'm going to show you some real-life self-defense techniques for real-world situations you might encounter. And my self-defense system has been tested in the only laboratory that matters, the streets. Real-life situation number one, you're walking down an alleyway after work, you encounter a mugger, okay? He wants crack. So he's gonna put his arm on my shoulder in a typical mugger stance, okay? Now the first thing you wanna do, step one, get wrist control. So I grab his wrist, I peel it back, okay? Now I have wrist control, I can kind of, do you feel that? I'm kind of controlling where his body goes, okay? Step number two, pull out your gun. It's very important that you pull out your gun. Now that I have wrist control, I can kind of just move him around and take him where I want to go and evade being mugged. I have complete control. No crack for you today, my friend. <laughs> like how it's a black guy used to be the mugger. That's very good. Thank you. Baldo Peggins for two says test. Congratulations, it worked. It did not show up on screen though. That's what you were testing. I have to fix that at some point. I apologize. I'm gonna have to fix that this weekend, but I've been doing I've been very busy doing something else. By the way, I just got 74 tech. <laughs> rabies right up for five says, come drink daddy's stink brandy with big rabies after the after party stream. I'm streaming Cyber Chud after this Maddie. Check it out. Okay. It is Twitch TV slash Redneck Rabies Gaming. Redneck Rabies Gaming. You can watch this guy play Cyber Chud on Twitch if you would like to. Thank you. Haramburger for two says, Life is too easy right now. Which should I do to fuck things up? Gambling addiction or pegging fetish? Um, the gambling addiction is, is more visible, but pegging fetish is the long con. Eventually that ruins your life. The Lonely Wendigo for 10 says, when both the right and left hate you, you're doing something right. It would be a lot easier if I had um, some friends, but unfortunately, everybody is retarded, and I refuse to play games with retards. I only make fun of retards. Uh, Steven Rith for 2 says, gun recommendations, AR-15, LMT, Mars L with EOTech XP sights, AR-10, LMT, R Mars H with Voodoo 1 and 10 scope, pistol Glock 47 with tri Tri G Cone RMR Red Dot. Only American made products, no chicky trash. Okay. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind, my dude. Um Jedi Josea for or Hosea for 20 says, Thank you, Jersh, you expat who j just wants to live in the mountains. How dare you? Can't wait for the Ralph segment on Friday. I mean, I, I literally, my politics are that I want to be left the fuck alone. I understand that in the world of politics, being left alone is an extreme luxury that everyone around the world has mostly, or mostly everybody around the world has been fighting for for a very long time. And in order to be left alone, sometimes you have to be a little bit on the offense. Um, however, my options for people to join sides with all suck right now. So currently I will focus only on... The one thing I stand any chance of control over, which is a little bit of that free speech shit that nobody seems to like. Maybe if there was more free speech, your shitty podcast would be more public because people could actually find it and it wouldn't just be censored everywhere. Um, thank you, though. Ruby's right now for two says, I'm too retarded to figure out streaming on Rumble. Twitch has Twitch studio as fuck you neighbors. Okay. So that's Rabies the Redneck Gaming again. He would like you to watch him play Cyber Chud, made by our boy Crunklord420, who got a who has pissed off every podcaster in the world. Apparently, they all know him. He's like more famous than me to the rightoids. 
the to the podcast race. Um, Finno Hungarian imperialist reflexes for a moment. I thought it was Sven Stoffels. I was very disappointed. Me too. I was curious what that was. Um, up until I played it. Dot to dot for thir- for five says here's your monthly share of the CIA's black budget poppy money. Don't tell anyone. Thank you very much. I won't tell a soul. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Um, Finno Hungarian imperialist again for five says I don't know about payments. Remember when Ralph pissed off Graf and he immediately tried to dox the Casa Verde using IP logs he claims he doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. I do remember him using IP logs he claims he doesn't have. Um, to try and dox Ralph. Funny how that works, huh? All right. So that's that. Uh, thank you for sticking along. Thank you to that one guy who gave me some bonus content to live react to. Listen to some some retard see about shit. Um, you know what? I got I got a song. I got a song to play us out on, on with that uh with that nice nice little thing. Uh I'll see you guys on Friday. Take it easy. Bye bye. Yeah, we gotta go with something to eat, man. I'm in the motherfucker. Hey yo, man. Damn, what's taking home so long, son? Freaky, calm down, man. Come. I hope the fuck. Oh, I see something come up. Pull up. Many men wish death upon me Blood in my eye, dog, and I can't see I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be And niggas trying to take my life away I put a hole in a nigga for fucking with me My back on the wall, now you gon' see Better watch how you talk when you talk about me Cause I'll come and take your life away Many men, many, 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 many men Wish death on me, dawg I don't cry no more Don't look to the sky no more Have mercy on me Man, these pussy niggas put money on my head Go on, get your refund, motherfucker I ain't dead I'm the diamond in the dirt That ain't been found I'm the underground king And I ain't been crowned When I rhyme Something special happen every time I'm the greatest Something like Ali in this prime I walk the block with the bundles I've been knocked on the humble Swing the ox when I rumble Show your ass with my gun do. Gotta tip a nigga, go ahead Lose your head Turn your back on me, get clapped and lose your legs I walk around, gun on my waist Chip on my shoulder, top bust a clip in your face Post to this beef ain't no Many men Many, 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 many men Wish death for me, Lord, I don't cry no more Don't look to the sky no more Have mercy on me, have mercy on my soul Somewhere my heart turned cold Have mercy on many men Many, 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 many men Wish death for me Sunny days wouldn't be special if it wasn't for rain Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain Death gotta be easy, cause life is hard It'll leave you physically, mentally, and emotionally scarred This is for my niggas on the block, for some trees and cigars For the niggas on lock, doing life behind bars I don't see only God can judge me, cause I see things clear Quickest crackers will give my black ass a hundred years I'm like Paulie and Goodfellas, you can call me the Don Like Malcolm by any means, with my gun in my palm Slim switch sides on me, let niggas ride on me I thought we was cool, why you want me to die, homie, homie? Many men, many, 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 many men Wish death for me, Lord, I don't cry no more Don't look to the sky no more Have mercy on me, have mercy on my soul Somewhere my heart turned cold Have mercy on many men, many, 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 many men Wish death for Every me Every night I talk to God, but he don't say nothing back I know he protected me, but I still stay with my gat and my nightmares Niggas keep pulling checks on me Psycho said some bitch done put a hex on me The feds didn't know much when Pop got shot I got a kite from the pins that told me Tuck got knocked I ain't gon' spell it out for you motherfuckers all the time Are you a literate nigga? You can't read between the lines In the Bible it says, what goes around comes around I'ma shot me, three weeks later he got shot down Now it's clear that I'm here for a real reason Cause he got hit like I got hit, but he ain't fucking breathing Many men, many, 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 many men Wish death for me, Lord, I don't cry no more 
Don't look to the sky no more Have mercy on me Have mercy on my soul Somewhere my heart turned cold Have mercy on many men Many, 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 many men Wish death on me 